Fam, what's up? Kyle Henderson, Bama Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys being here. Hit the thumbs up and let me know where you guys are coming from inside the comment box. Uh, on today's show, I want to hear who is on Alabama's current Mount Rushmore. I was thinking about that. Minus Coach Saban, okay? So take Coach Saban away now that he has retired. And like currently from the University of Alabama, who is on Mount Rushmore, all right? Uh, payday, the contract is in for Coach Kalen DeBoer. We'll be making a whopping $87 million if he was to stay at Alabama over the course of eight seasons, all right? He's making $10 million in his initial year. What's up? Good morning to everybody in the Undefeated. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. Uh, let me know where you're coming from inside the comment box. I love to do the shout outs. I don't know. It just puts me in a good mood. Um, I like to see where you guys are coming from. And uh, let me get that camera situated. Got the workout in this morning. And I was up. The alarm. So what happened was I woke up and I was freaked out because um, my, my phone didn't. My phone was dead. And I woke up and I was like, oh, man, I missed my workout. And I was like, oh, man. So I got up and it was 4 a.m. It was 4.01. So I was like, okay, I got 30 more minutes to sleep because when I do my workouts, I wake up at 4.30. So I went back to sleep, woke up, got the workout in, working out in downtown Tuscaloosa today. Um, was a hell of a workout. My goodness. You know, and it was like after the spring break, kind of getting your body back into it. Um, it was good. It was freezing, though. It was 29 out there. I think when I posted a video, it was like 32 or whatever. Um so I, yeah, so I plugged it in, went back to sleep, got up, got the workout in, feel good, feel great, feel rested, but it's tough. I mean, like, you know, these guys in Tuscaloosa, they don't play, you know? Um, let me read out some shout outs. T, we got T uh, behind the glass um, as a producer today. Uh, T, could you throw out, uh, you know, some uh, rep your cities and I'll read them out before we get, uh, before we get going. And the call online is open all day long, all day all hour that I'm here. 205-850-1994. All right, Neo's coming to us from Birmingham. What's up? Or from Birmingham. Janet, what's going on? From Florence, Alabama. We appreciate you. Anitra, what's up? Good morning. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, um, you know, for joining us on this fine Tuesday, March 19th. What else we got? Larry Large. What's up, Larry? We appreciate you, man. Like that hat up top, man. Got the tilted brim. Good stuff. I appreciate you being here. Let's keep it rolling. Lisa Lucked, good morning from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Okay, we appreciate you. Um, okay, Anitra is in Fairburn, Georgia. Okay, not too far away. Need to get out to Georgia. A farm outside in uh, <laughs> Geneva, New York. Okay, what's up, Matt Farms? Uh, Matt Farms, literally on a farm. Dustin Hodge, what's up? Checking in from the airport, headed to Miami, then to the Bahamas. Hell yeah. Dustin, you got room for one more? Man, the Miami and the Bahamas. Antoine always rocking the gear. Hey, T, by the way, he sent in, uh, Antoine sent in some fresh gear that he has. Um, and uh, he was giving us our uh, his Mount Rushmore. Save that on Antoine, star it, and we'll come back to it when we start talking about the Mount Rushmore. Uh, hey, birthday twin, uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Someone's birthday. KD, is that you, Coach KD? Coach Kalen DeBoer? <laughs> Let's keep it going. Kevin, what's up, man? Coming to us from Charlotte. You know what I was also asking? T and I were talking the other day, and we were driving around, and I was like, which city could have like the next NFL team? So we started naming off like cities that made sense to us. And I don't know, like maybe it, it undefeated, I'll ask you. Like, and we're just talking, I, this is just a random talk. That I, I thought about it because, um, you know, would like what other cities could have an NFL team? Like what would be next? And we started thinking, and, and Charlotte reminded me because T was like, what about Charlotte? And I was like, would they have the Carolina Panthers? Um, then we started kind of trading some names. I mean, I don't, I think Birmingham is too small. Um, What's up, Glenn? I see you uh, coming to us from Montreal. Neo's from Pensacola. I saw you earlier, Neo, saying that it was cold. It is like 32. Uh, it's so cold in Alabama. This last kind of stretch in March can be cold. And you know what else is it can be really hot in like October. I was just talking to my dad about that. Um, Pensacola by way of Mobile. All right, man. Got you. 
That's what's up. Keep it going. Rodney, good morning to you, man. Thank you for joining us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Clink is like cold. <laughs> good morning, Kyle. What's up, Crest Boy? Crest Boy Gaming. What's up? Chelsea, Alabama. You know what? Raise the bar. I went to Chelsea High School, um, their, their football stadium. Last year, my son's football team had a scrimmage out there. That's a really, really nice football uh, stadium. It's kind of like you got to go through Birmingham. I've never been out there before, so I'm like kind of driving through the woods and stuff. It was cool. Really nice setup. What else we got, T? Henderson, Nevada. Oh, Shane, what's up, man? I've said this to you before, I think, uh, Shane, but my uncle lives out in Henderson. So when I go out there, I stayed, at, stayed uh, before at the Green Valley Ranch. I actually think I stayed at uh, Stations. Is that right? Did I stay at Stations Casino before? I think I did. Um... And he used to he used to hang out at the Fiesta, but I don't think the Fiesta exists anymore. All right, let's keep it going. Oxford, Alabama. That's what's up. What's up, Caleb? See you inside the comment box. Uh, Jor, incoming from an office near you. Okay, you ever seen that movie Office Space? You guys, too. Is that a too old? Did I date myself? Um, <laughs> Jimmy Brown, what's up? Good morning, Kyle and Taylor from Homewood, Alabama. You know, I went to Homewood. Um, I don't know. I haven't been in a while, maybe in like a year. Man, such a great uh, little stretch, right? That's where Andrew Bone lives. The great Andrew Bone lives up in Homewood. That's a really nice area. San Antonio's 49. DR, that was one of the cities that we thought should maybe have a um, an NFL team was San Antonio. Prattville up in the house. Just drove through that area um, on the way to the beach. There's so many ways to go down the beach. What else we got? T. Fullerton, California. Yeah, Cal State Fullerton. Really good baseball, right? Yep, been out there. Jamie, what's going on, man? Satsuma. <laughs> Is that, did I say that right? <laughs> Alabama, what's up, Jamie? I appreciate you being here. Good morning to you. Bobby, what's up, man? Uh, Bay Monty, Alabama. <laughs> I'm going to need the, some, uh, some, where's my, where's T at to help me with these names? Okay, let's keep it going. Bobby, what's up, man? I like that avatar. Wait, can you go back to that avatar of, of Bobby? What was that? That's cool. You're liking a, a snow globe or something. <laughs> oh, that's cool. All right, let's keep it going. Uh, Geneva, what's up? Cre oh, Crest Boy is back in it. Okay, cool. All right. We got a lot of people checked in today. Russellville, Paul. All right. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys can continue to let me know where you guys are coming from inside the comment box. I appreciate you guys. want to take your calls today. So if you want to chit-chat this morning, call in 205-850-1994. Bay Minton. All right. I got you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, man, cool. All right. So I want to ask you, Undefeated. So I started thinking about this. Literally, I don't know why I started thinking about this, but I was thinking about it this morning. Because, oh, you know what made me think about it was point two. What's up, Lynn? Good morning to you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for being here. Um, so I was thinking about, because the coaches' contracts, and we're going to showcase that, and I'll have a graphic. Uh, and I was thinking, like, who is on now the Mount Rushmore? Like, currently, as of, like, this point in time, with uh, Coach Saban now retired, who's on the Mount Rushmore? So give me your one, two, three, four of like a Mount Rushmore at the University of Alabama. What do you guys think? I personally think that this is this is mine, and you can let me know if maybe I hit it like out the park, maybe I missed somebody. So I have, I, I, I have Kalen DeBoer. I know he hasn't coached the game, but I mean, shoot, he's making $10 million here. <laughs> and then he got Nate Oates. And then I'm going to go with uh, Greg Byrne. I mean, all those guys are making more than $2 million, right? And then I'm going, no, I'm just saying like currently as of March 19th, 2024. Kyle, love your channel, but discouraging me members only require to see practice footage. No, no, no. It, it's all the practice for every single thing is posted for the regular viewers to watch. That footage was just posted before like premium members. If I upload something, I'll post it for everybody to see some of our exclusive content that's behind like a for a fan funder, which is only two dollars and ninety nine cents a month. 
um, you can just get like Coach Smook talking about something or Coach Sean or myself. Uh, but all that footage is the same that everybody else can see. So um, that's just, it, you get you get like 12 hours before. So, but yeah, it's um, you can always see it. And I appreciate you asking. Um, so I was thinking, <clears throat> look, Jimmy Brown just hit you up. So maybe you could become a fan funder. <laughs> so that's who I was thinking on my Mount Rushmore. I was thinking that Greg Byrne, Kalen DeBoer, Nate Oates, and I, my my fourth person was the guy who was making the next, I, I guess, I, I think Jalen Milrow was making like $1.5 million, if I had to say, through like NIL deals. I don't know if he's making more than Nick Sheridan, who's making one point three, <clears throat> or Kane Womack, right? But um, I'm going to see uh, Mount Rushmore. Who do you guys think? Kevin is saying, uh, Kevin, so this Mount Rushmore is about um, who I getting pain or not of their achievements? I don't know. I just think like who's like that. That's a good question. Like, what are we looking at Mount Rushmore for Alabama? I think those are like the four marquee representatives right now for sure. Nate Oates is definitely one of them, right? I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe I missed somebody. I posted it on Twitter and somebody was like, "It's Cedric," <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, Cedric should definitely be on there." But he don't even put the water bottle anymore. I think what happened was is Cedric is now just like he's staying with Coach Saban. I don't know. All right, uh, we got an eight six five. I let's see. <laughs> I think let's let's take this. <laughs> hey, good morning. You're on Hello, the line, Kyle Anderson. We're on the line with him. Where are you calling in from? This is Angel again. How you doing, Kyle? What's up, Angel? It's been a minute, man. I hope you're having a good March, man. I've, Welcome into the show, man. Yeah. Who's on your Who's on your uh, yeah, Mount busy. Who's on your Mount Rushmore as of today? uh for coaches or players oh that's a, see that's good i don't know just give me like a like who's on just like mount rushmore just for like today and the baseball coach is doing a damn good job they're 17 and 3 right now um i don't know angel who you who you got right now um i, I guess for coaches i would say uh nick saban bear bryant gene stallings and maybe kirby smart Dang, that, wow, that would be crazy. Okay, so you know what? I think we'll get more traction if we do like a, a Mount Rushmore. This is what will get a better, this will what will get better feedback because if you do like a Mount Rushmore of like all time. Um, okay, so the coaches, but what about, that'd be hard. What about players? Uh, I would say uh, Tua. I would say uh, Devontae. Mm-hmm. Uh uh, yeah, uh, not Williams. Um, uh, Julio Jones. Mm. There's so many good players. I, I would, I probably would say, uh, uh, defensively, I would probably say, uh, uh Jonathan Allen. Mm. He was great, man. Yep. And, yeah, and I'll do one more, and it'll be uh, probably Nick Fitzpatrick for uh, the, being a safety. You know. Mm. I mean, we had so many great players. It's hard to choose all the players, you know. Cause mm-hmm. There's been so many great players that came to Alabama. Mm-hmm. But I've said that's my uh, that's my top for now, at least, and because it'll probably change down the line. But that's that's all I have for the Mount Rushmore right now. But you know, it's hard to choose every single one of those players because they're so good. Because there's just so many players to choose from, and and you know. That's what people said about Alabama. Like, uh, they're, they're not good anymore. We, we've been really good. And we had all these players. And the NFL is being overrun by Alabama players. What do you think about that? It's built by Bama. Tell you what. And what do you think on that, though? Like, yeah, I think, you, uh, you know, you know we, I mean, it'd be a hell of a conversation to have is like who the players who would be like your Mount Rushmore. I guess for me, like the the people or, or like the players that I would choose from. And I'm just talking players now, like since I've covered Alabama over the last eight years, I think Minka is a really great representation of someone who could be on like a Mount Rushmore. I think of Devon. I would definitely put my first choice, though, would be Devonte Smith. Um, my second would be. My second would probably be, man, am I going to go with Minka? Um, and then I'm going to go with, I'm going to put Jalen Milrow. Um, 
and then I'm going, and these are just players that I have covered since I've been here. And then I'm going to put, um, I don't know. I have to think about this. Maybe Landon Dickerson. Seriously. I, I love Landon yeah. Dickerson. He was like, and the crazy thing was, is he came in, he was like one of like the first like transfer guys to like come in, um, yeah. before like the transfer Him portal craziness. Too. And he was just, I don't know. Yeah. He was amazing. I loved him. Um, so yeah, maybe that yeah. would be, maybe I would have Milro, Landon Dickerson, Devonte Smith and Minka Fitzpatrick. Yeah. And I think like, yeah, I, and, I and I guess you're, 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 your Mount Rushmore, like on the show can be whatever you like, think about it, whether it's all time, yeah. you know, since you, since I covered the team currently, co I mean, you went with coaches. Um, I don't know. Um, let's kind of switch gears real quick. Um, what did you think about the coaching contracts yesterday? And T, if you could get a graphic up uh, to showcase the gra the contracts from yesterday. But Kalen DeBoer, if yeah, he was yeah. to stay here for eight years, he's making close to $90 million, which is a heavy, heavy contract. Yeah. Um, what, what were yeah. your thoughts? Anything that uh, stood out about the contracts that were finalized yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His, his, his main contract, the head coach, it's kind of steep, but we got we to gotta win big. You know, you got to yeah. go all in in order to get the championships because that's what he wants to do. He wants to win. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, it's a heavy price to pay, but something has to give in order to make that happen. You got to make some sacrifices. And and, that, and that's probably the best way to do it because, yeah, eight years is a long time, but we will have to see this experiment. And we'll, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But... I'm probably confident that it will work because he's he's that guy who wants to work, and you know that he wouldn't leave Washington for nothing, though. Mm -hmm. So th that, this job took him away from Washington, and he says once in a lifetime opportunity. I would take it too if I was him. Mm -hmm. uh, but and also, it uh, came Womack. Yeah, it's only two years, but hey, uh, if if he does good in these two years, we should just lock him down. You know, just. With that heavy max deal, and uh, and Shepard too, he's got me worried too a little bit because two years. I mean, he might be gone by the time that happens, and uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> we got we got to lock these people down, you know, because the NFL is kind of knock on our door, and you know, and they want to take this opportunity for you, and like what happened to Ryan Grum. We gotta make sure you gotta lock these guys down because if they want to be here, they want to be here. Yeah, and they want to work. Okay, Alabama is not a job to be taken lightly. It's a prestigious job, and everything's on the line for that. And also for Nate Oates, I mean, it's okay, but you gotta do better defensively for these players because you know the last two games we've been getting smacked around, mm -hmm. and it's kind of getting. Uh, irritating to be honest with you, it's driving me up a wall when they didn't play no defense because Florida again, and he's got to change something up on the offense and get better players in from the portal. How are you going to do it? I don't know, but you got to get better, big man, because I'm sick and tired of them getting like uh, bullied on the paint, and it's just crazy, man. We just thought some about Nate Oates's, I mean, uh. Adjustment to the NCAA tournament once it hits, you know, because it's been kind of lacking defensively these past few games. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll answer on the other line. So I I appreciate you calling in. I'm gonna open up the line for somebody else. But thanks for calling in, Angel, and I'll answer you about NATO right Thank now, man. You. Appreciate you, man. Roll Tide. Thank you, man. Roll um, What's up? My my thoughts with the the basketball team is uh, is this. I mean, clearly they are not playing uh, the best basketball. In fact, they entered the basketball tournament. Um, losing their last four out of six games. I think this is a basketball team that, I mean, could they, do they have an elite, elite eight talent? I think so, um, if they get hot. Um, but what worries me when you look at this basketball team, and I think not, you know, this doesn't, doesn't have to do with last year, but they're not playing well on the road or in neutral site games. In fact, they're two and four in neutral site games, and I get it. They played very difficult teams. Um, they're five and five on the road. SEC was very difficult this year on the road, and they're two and seven against top twenty-five teams. Charleston is not a top twenty-five team. Um, I think they actually show out really well in this first game against Charleston. Um, by the way, if uh, you want to play in our uh, March Madness bracket challenge, 
Uh, T will post the link inside the comment box uh, free to join. It's through ESPN. We're going to keep track. We're going to give out prizes to people who uh, make it to the Sweet 16 Elite Eight. I don't even know what those prizes are. They might be a sticker that says Bama Football on YouTube, and the prizes might get better as you get into the Final Four um, or whatever. So um, T, there's there's a link right now, and I think we have close to 50 people that have joined. So uh, definitely uh, join our bracket challenge right there uh, inside the comment box. And the thing with Nate Oates, I think he's done a gr an amazing job. I mean, one of the great signs that you're doing an amazing job is when people start coming in poaching your assistance. He has had continued success for the last several years since he's been here. He's really put Alabama basketball back on the map. I think it's time for this program to take the next step, which puts a little bit more pressure on him, right? Like elite people want an elite eight appearance, right? A sweet 16, I think would satisfy people this year. Last year's performance in the tournament was underwhelming. San Diego State was the big team. And I think Florida was that similar team that beat them, what, two out of three times this year. So people want to see an Elite Eight run. Nate Oates is doing a hell of a job, though. Recruiting, um, how he's managing the overall program. So it's good to see him get paid. That's why I mentioned him on my like current uh, Mount Rushmore. Uh, Caleb, let's see. Caleb says, if anybody has something critical to say about Oates, hit me up. We are much better off with him than we were before. Definitely. Number recruit number six recruiting class coming in two. Yeah, it's it's been amazing. Look, I have just covered two basketball coaches at Alabama. One was Avery Johnson, who was an amazing dude. Great guy. Biggest smile. A million percent. Um, and Nate Oates. And Nate Oates is, has a fire in his belly. He's also very personable, to be honest. He's he's very likable, um, very cordial with the media. I think he gives pretty good access um, in terms of like the media, you know, speaking to him. I think he needs a throat lozenge most of the time, but I I think he's one of the best coaches in college basketball right now. So happy to see him taken care of. I think that um, oh, somebody somebody was saying something about uh, Robert Gillespie, the running back coach. I think there was a lot of smoke out there that said that Robert Gillespie was going to leave Alabama. I don't, I didn't, I never really thought that. I mean, he was already making, I think he was making 650. And now you see his coaching contract as the new title assistant head coach is 850. So he's getting paid a million percent. He's done a great job here at Alabama. There were two coaches that were retained under the Nick Saban ecosystem when he retired. Robert Gillespie was one. And Freddie Roach is the other. And as you can see, Freddie Roach has been doing a really great job recruiting. And Robert Gillespie, think about his running. Why would you want to leave? Think about the running backs you you have this year. Yeah, I know. There was people who said that he was leaving. He's not leaving. Yeah, I'm going to leave when I have Justice Haynes and Jam Miller. <laughs> like, no. I'm going to leave when I have uh, Turbo coming in. You have a running back that's probably going to commit on Wednesday as well, right? So, um, I mean, good things are happening. Yeah, and all those Bama coaches are getting paid. It's, it's amazing to see how much money there is to go around. And remember, just because the university has all this money, they can't, through the rules right now, can't pay the players. It has to come from the collective. So don't think that like just because the coaches aren't getting paid, like Alabama doesn't want the players like to pay the players. If Alabama, the university, could pay the players, that would be a different story. Like They would pay them. Um, but you know, that's, that's not the case right now based off the rules of the NSA. I think sometimes that's confusing. What's up, Todd? I appreciate you, man. Um, I think the, uh, let's see, is it Daryl, Daryl Johnson? I think he might be committing. Let's see. Daryl Johnson on three. <clears throat> well, he's listed as an athlete. So Daryl Johnson, who's six one, two hundred 200 pound athlete is a four star um, out of Dodge County. So on three says he's, you know, do it all type player. See him on the defensive side of the ball. So, so maybe he's a, a athlete more than a running back, but I think he's pretty much locked in to commit to Alabama and that'll be happening on Wednesday. What's up, John M. I see you inside the comment box. Thanks, Jor. Linebacker and safety. So there you go. Thanks guys. Um, but my point is, is like Robert Gillespie was never going to go anywhere 
because of the guys that he has in Alabama taking care of him, right? So no need for him to go anywhere. Plus, he's going to have Jason. Think about the running backs that he's coached and sent off to the league, right? Um, looks like we got Chris calling in from New Jersey. I'll get Michael. Hey, Chris, what's up, man? Good morning to you. I appreciate you being here. Kyle, good morning. Welcome back from vacation. Yeah, I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you so much. Hope uh, the month of March is well, treating you, know, you well. What's the temperature up there? Oh, it's 35 degrees. Yeah. Not good. Same not here. good, Kyle. Same here. It's freezing. Yeah. Oh. This, is, uh, this is not the spring out there so far. So, um, well, I wanted to let you know, my wife said, uh, don't you call Kyle and uh, Taylor on their vacation. So uh, I waited. <laughs> I waited. <laughs> Um, you know, I want to I want to let you know about all these salaries and if anybody has a, a, anything negative to say, and I'll tell you why they shouldn't be negative at all. So, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I've never mentioned it, but I am financial. I'm a financial guy, but so don't don't hold that against me. But um, so there was an article written about Saban and it was the return on investment on uh, Nick Saban as a university. Yeah. So 17, just FYI, 17 years ago. The University of Alabama was in a terrible state. Mm. I, mean, I, I don't know if people knew this. Mm. They had very few students applying from out of state, almost none. Mm -hmm. The bulk of the, uh, the, 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 the students were in-state, mm. um, and a giant percentage of those in-staters were all financial aid students. Wow. Now, uh, trust me, I went to, I went to Rutgers on a, on a, on a, you know, a scholarship mm -hmm. because my family had no money. So mm -hmm. I, I, all those people that went... To, to, on, on financial aid, I'm with you all. So, but however, what happened when Saban came in? Um, the the number uh, and and foot the football program started to do really well. The number of out out, out of state um, applications skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. They have to pay more money than in state. Mm -hmm. um, the, the 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 university did nothing but you know everyone thinks that they Alabama spent only spent the money on stadiums and yeah. football. Uh, you know jacuzzi cups. That's not true at all. They they put a lot of money into the, into the academic development of the whole university. Look yeah. at the rankings. Every year, Alabama rises further in the academic rankings mm -hmm. since Saban. And so, um, you know, and this was this was a few years ago. This article that was written about Saban, and it was saying that the um, you know the football program brings in like more than 150 million. I think it was like the number was 170 million a year. And you know that, mm -hmm. of course, that's included the SEC network. I think they get about fifty million a year from that, fifty or sixty. Million. But that's the receipts at for the stadium. Mm -hmm. That's all. That that's all the the gear and everything, and that funds every sport um, yeah. except for men's basketball. Mm -hmm. Every other sport is a deficit. Uh, yeah, um, at a deficit. So every sport can look at Nick Saban and look at Coach DeBoer and say, "Thank you for letting me hit a softball." Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, so the, every every penny that's on this screen, there should be stars up here. Like, booyah! Thank you for coming, and and I hope that this is enough. Mm -hmm. So don't uh, people should be going? Oh my God, ten million dollars! No, the, the football has brought uh, uh, Alabama riches. It's brought it out of state students coming from all over the country. All there's there's so many international students, and they're going to continue to come. And by the way, how about Alabama? Every year, it's harder and harder and harder to get into the University of Alabama. Mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the academic standards rise and rise and rise. So yeah. everything that, that went down is is a super positive. Everybody should be, uh, um, you know, jumping for joy that this guy came. Um, I am. I, I think I, I've said it to you. You know, you and I said it together. This guy is Saban 2.0. I know he's unproven. It's a lot of a big thing to say, Kyle, but. This guy is going to be saving 2.0. We're, we're going to watch it in front of our own eyes. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we're all super excited. So forgive me, um, you know, what's going on with the, is there a practice today, tomorrow? I didn't, I didn't fully get the schedule. Sometimes I have to, to turn, you know, turn the sound down, which bothers me, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> that's a good question. Um, so, well, first of all, um, your point about the impact that Coach Saban had over the last 17 years has been amazing to see even within the last eight years because you look at the development within the city of tuscaloosa even just tuscaloosa county it's booming i mean there's condos being built there's houses being built i mean the prices in certain zip codes are 
incredible. And I think even, you know, Taylor was talking about she had someone come speak to her master's class about, you know, people worried that with Coach Saban leaving, how would it affect the economy overall in the city of Tuscaloosa? But you're right. I mean, there's so many out-of-state students. It's really been amazing to see. And that was one of the strategies and one of the great things that Coach Saban did was really put Alabama, the university, on the map through football, right? And um, he won. And now Coach Kalen DeBoer taking over as a head football coach. I think that it's going to uh, retain that same prestige. It already still does. You see it with uh, early recruiting. You see it with the late signees that he had from 2024. Someone was like, when is he going to sign or get five stars? Well, he got Ryan Williams. You know, it was a five star. It was the first five star that he got. It was a pretty big one too, right? Yeah, 100 Two-time yep. Mr. Football from no matter where he was from, getting Ryan Williams – to sign with Alabama was amazing. Um, so the schedule for this week reads like this. Alabama will start practice again today, which is Tuesday. Um, it is a closed media window, so no one is available to see practice today. That'll be their first practice since spring break. And then on Wednesday, we will have another opportunity, the media, to see Alabama practice. Probably like 30 minutes of footage. That'll be on... Um, uh, I'm sorry. On Wednesday is pro day. So scratch that. Today is practice Tuesday. Wednesday is pro day. Usually Coach Saban would speak at pro day. I'm not sure if Coach Kalen DeBoer is going to speak at pro day. I don't even know which players are going to be at pro day, to be honest. Um, yesterday when I got a haircut, um, the next guy at the barbershop was Dallas Turner. Um, so I would expect him to be there, but Dallas Turner doesn't need to you know, show out for anybody after what he did at the NFL Combine. No. Um, yeah, so when pro, you run like yeah, the wind. <laughs> right. Pro day is Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we'll be back at practice and we'll have an opportunity to watch practice. So that's on Thursday. So be expecting practice footage on Thursday. And then coach Kalen DeBoer speaking at the podium around what? 615, 620 on Thursday night. And then on Saturday, we have another practice. We're unable to view the practice, but we do get to speak with the defensive players and the, um, assistance and then next thursday will be their first scrimmage and again those are closed scrimmages but coach kalen DeBoer will speak after those scrimmages so that's kind of the the detail of this week so one more time today practice closed tomorrow pro day thursday open practice with coach kalen DeBoer. good questions what else you got chris nice nice all right kyle listen i want to say uh you know welcome back uh appreciate it just because <laughs> i didn't i didn't call for just because I didn't call for a week doesn't mean I, I still don't want to see you and Smoke and some humans. <laughs> don't forget about that one. <laughs> so, listen, uh, thank you for everything you do. I'm glad you got some rest yeah. with the fam. Yep. Uh, keep up those wonderful uh, messages you give in the morning. You were looking like you were getting after it today. Yeah, um, appreciate so, it. So, uh, we will talk soon, my friend. Uh, roll Tide. All right, Roll Tide team, man. Appreciate you. As a... Uh... <clears throat> Chris from New Jersey. Sometimes when I get those early workouts in too, it's like that cold, like gets into my chest, I guess. Cause so we show up, it's like four 30 or whatever. And, uh, we take off and we're, you know, we call it like mosey. It's like working, like jogging, but we jogged up this like gigantic hill and you're like, heart is like pounding from the jump. And then you start, you start doing push ups or whatever. So, um, but I feel much better from doing it. So anyways, can we go back to the other, uh, graphic T that we have? Appreciate you. These are the coaching contracts from yesterday. So, uh, I appreciate you guys being here and, uh, coming up next at 10 is Merrill. Uh, Ty's off, uh, today. Ty, I believe will be back on Wednesday, um, which is, uh, just in time for pro day. So, um, T, I don't know if you're there, but that other, just switch out the graphic. I appreciate you. And the call online, um, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Um, see if I can get that graphic myself. I think we have another call. Uh, it's a 571. Hey, good morning. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I line with and where are you calling in from? This is Glenn from Montreal. How you doing, man? Hey, what's up, Glenn? I appreciate you being here, man. Good morning to you. I uh, wanted to touch on something that really isn't part of the day, but it's something I've been thinking about. <clears throat> it was Coach Saban going to Coach Saban going to Washington. I uh, 
I've been thinking about the relationship between athletics and education. I used to be a, a high school basketball coach. And I, uh, I thought that education has been in the way of development, as Coach Saban said, for a long time. Mm with all the practice rules, the uh, inability to work individually with kids out of season. Mm. Um, the AA coaches say in basketball have had a much better access to the kids, but weren't necessarily producing the same sort of product. Uh, best way to see that is to look at the uh, skill development of kids outside of the United States in comparison to the fundamentals of kids inside the United States in basketball. I think we do a much better job in hockey and in baseball mm -hmm. because of the relationship between the pro teams and kids. Mm. It's more of a foreign type system. Mm. The problem is, is that we down the road here with uh, the relationship in football between universities and uh, the pros for years, we've been the, the, the farm system in college football for years. Mm. But in the way, standing in the way of development has been the NCAA and all the rules with regard to coaching out of season and development of kids. So I'm curious to see what, now that money's in the game, now that these kids are professionals, mm -hmm. um, what, 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 what is going to happen. I think that eventually we're going to see something where education and, and sports is split. Yeah. Um, at least the at least uh, the big sports, you know, mm -hmm. basketball, football, maybe baseball. I doubt baseball because they have their own farm system and what plays in college baseball is a different sort of level than the kids that, that are being produced in the pro sports. Although not to say that all college baseball players don't play pro. They, you know, it's sort of a minor league in a way, I guess. Um, but it's for me, I, I would like to see, or I don't even think we can imagine a world where – college football is a farm system and so does that do we keep the relationship between education and sports the same if, it, if in fact we're going to accept that mm. college football is now a farm system do we localize it so it looks like little small town soccer teams in, yeah. in england like yeah. mill wall or something <laughs> like that so it's going to be interesting to see where it goes mm -hmm. do you have any thoughts about that yeah, I mean, as we can, if we if we zoom out and we look at like the next five years of college football, I don't know if college football is going to be remotely close to what college football is today. And think about think about this, Glenn. And by the way, great call, and great points. Think about this, and everybody inside the undefeated as well. Think about five years ago, five seasons ago. Okay, college football. And how much it's changed up to this point in time. Think about another five years. And I think what is going to happen eventually is a mega conference. And that is going to be right under the NFL. And I think that's why you're going to have teams trying to pry their way into the SEC or the Big Ten. Because I think those two conferences are going to create something else. And these other conferences are going to become like completely like below that. Almost like a double A. Like you're talking about. Like a two-way system. Um, I think it's coming. I think that it'll happen. Um, and um, yeah, I think these next couple of years are going to be really interesting. I think, I mean, we this this entire first quarter of 2024 has been probably some of the most monumental college football news ever, right? Coach Saban retiring, Coach Saban up on Capitol Hill talking about NIL. And I think there's a lot of people who probably view what Coach Saban said up on Capitol Hill is he doesn't want players to get paid. That's not, that's not his standpoint. The standpoint is how he felt with Bryce Young. And he brought, that was a great example, right? NIL was supposed to be that. Like, businesses or corporations are supposed to contact the athlete but now it's a pay for play by the collectives right and that's what they're trying to put rules and parameters of because there's no competitive balance within college football and i don't think you can buy a college team to win championships i think that's been done before i think it's been it's trying to ohio state is taking that option right now probably Ole Miss as well. Those teams are going to be damn good, but I don't think either of those teams wins the NCAA football championship this year. So 
um, yeah, within the next five years, I can't even imagine what's going to happen. That's why, to be honest, I feel excited to be covering college football right now more than the last five years because I think these next five years are going to be some of the most entertaining, um, newsworthy events that we've ever seen before. What else you got, Glenn? I, I wanted to talk about uh, something that happened, you know, uh, when I was watching before you went away on vacation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were talking about, you know, feeling frosty there at, at the university. And I wanted you to think about something. You know, you're sitting here with 105,000 subscribers. Mm-hmm. You're independent media. And you mm-hmm. probably scare the hell out of some people. Yeah. And, I, and, and so I would take that rather as an offense as to somebody patting you on the back and saying, you're doing a hell of a job, son. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I think that, you know, what you're producing has been at the right place mm-hmm. at the right time mm-hmm. and, 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 and the right way. Yeah. And I just wanted to tell you that. Publicly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You know, uh, one of the best things about being into de- being independent is I can be truly authentic. Um, that I don't have to follow some script. I can report on the news the way I see fit. I understand the responsibilities that come with it. Um, I, it, to be honest, it's been a little bit unfortunate to, um, not have, uh, some of the access that other, uh, channels have had, but I'm not entitled to that. Right. So you got to be able to, um, just run your own race and focus on your own show, your own channel. And if those things come, that's great. If they don't, it's fine too. I mean, look at the magnitude that this channel has. And I think you're right. I think, um, a lot of people probably view this channel as more, adversarial just because of the strength of in numbers but you know it is what it is i mean i worked for every single subscriber and i'm still doing that every single day so i appreciate that glenn and i uh, appreciate you joining us this morning all right man you have a good one brother all right you too man take it easy all right uh glenn calling in uh from uh montreal all right we got a 256 we'll take that next right here on bama football on youtube um, I want to uh, thank our sponsors at the bottom. Uh, sponsor Residence Inn, Ocean City, Maryland, 20% off for LPR. That's the promo code uh, Rogue Shop. Um, let, let me know if you get some of those uh, CBD orders in. Um, I'm curious to see how that goes. And remember, when if you do go through Rogue Shop to use the promo code BAMA. Uh, and then um, Demetrius Maynard, who's a viewer like you, is just a sponsor. So I appreciate it. I'm going to play uh, a one-minute commercial, uh, which talks about our sponsors. And then I'll be right back, and I'll take that. Uh, 256 you're going to see a minute commercial um starting uh right let's see if i i think this is it <laughs> starting right now special thanks to our sponsor residents in ocean city maryland guests can book at residents in oc.com use the promo code lpr for special bamo football pricing up to 20 percent off also go to the rogue shop.com use the promo code bamo you get legal cbd for me personally i like the topical oil you know how intense my workouts are right so i like the topical oil i like to rub that on my back whatever after those cinder blocks so go to their website cruise down look through their website and uh, definitely check out rogue shop.com and like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is Bama. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 cents a day. How do you do this? Make sure you're logged into your account. This is on a computer. You can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership. Once you click membership, you can see different options. You can see an upgrade button right there to the right. If you want to go through the different levels, we have fan funder videos from the staff right here at Bama football on YouTube. Very easy to navigate. Let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama football on YouTube. And of course, if you want to rock that undefeated gear, Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. That's what's up. I'm seeing people uh, post their uh, height and weight inside the comment box. Ronnie, man, you lost 89 pounds on keto? That's what's up. I have a buddy uh, back in New Mexico who did uh, keto, um, and he said, you know, I mean, he looks great, so... You know, whatever works for you. I am about, um, like for me, like my workouts kind of get me going from like an energy standpoint. 
Um, but what's been an interesting transformation is like there's a lot of push-ups. There's a lot of work with like cinder blocks. Um, there is a lot of running as well, um, but more like body weight stuff. And in fact, um, I have a weight vest that I um, will soon start jumping rope with as well. I did that in the past as well. So um, right now I'm about 200 pounds, um, which feels which feels good. Um, I used to be, I mean, as, as light as like 170, um, but it's just kind of like shifting that weight around. So whatever it is, but I, I do encourage you to be healthy. Um, you know, so if you're walking, if you're running, you know, I'm not telling you to get up at 4:30 like me. And I know that's not for everybody, but you know, working out. So, um, and like, like I said, honestly, it just puts me in the right mindset for the day. So whatever. Um, and I've heard of really good things about intermittent fasting as well. I did that, um, for a while. Um, but right now when I get home, like, man, I, I'm starving right before I get on the show. Um, Hey Jay, we'll check on that. Um, uh, T do you see, uh, can we start Jay's comment so we can get, if he, uh, sent us a photo of some of his updated, uh, merchandise and I think Antoine did as well. So thanks, uh, Jay, we appreciate you, man. Um, for always supporting us right here on Bama football on YouTube. Um, let's do uh, a 256 right now. Hey, thanks for calling in. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on line with and where are you calling in from? This is Daryl from Huntsville. Daryl, what's up, coach? How you doing, man? Uh, another great day, Kyle. Yeah, hell yeah, man. I appreciate it. Coach, who's on your like all time Alabama Mount Rushmore players? Players, yeah. Kyle, that's a hard one. I know his uh, his too uh, hard. I, I mean, that's this. I mean, it's hard, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, I've been talking sports since I was since I was four years old because uh, I grew up watching boxing. It was the first sport I ever watched. And uh, when you start talking about who's the greatest, yep. on at, at Alabama. I mean, how do you yeah. you qualify? Because again, you're talking about you know mm -hmm. if you go tell me. Mm -hmm. That Leroy, Leroy Jordan is, was not as good as 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 uh, 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 Reuben Foster. I'm gonna tell you crazy because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can only do what you do in your era. Mm -hmm. And yep. you know, and then there's and then we got we got some people now. Uh, uh, there's a guy here. Uh, well, well, there's there's only two players in Alabama history. That are three time first team All Americans. Mm -hmm. Nobody even talks about them anymore. That's Cornelius Bennett and, and Woodrow Lowe. Jeez. So nobody even mentioned them anymore, mm -mm. but they were great players. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I can tell you my favorite players, uh, uh, I won't say one is better than the other one, but my one of my favorite players is Sean Alexander, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Johnny Musso. Yep. Uh, 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 Let's see. Uh, of course, Leroy Jordan, mm -hmm. um, uh, Joe Namath, Snake Stabler. I mean, yep. I mean, you know, they didn't win the highs when you look at their stats. Their stats look look paltry compared to the day's number because they didn't throw the ball back then mm -hmm. like they do now. Mm -hmm. But you gonna tell me that they shouldn't be on Mount Rushmore mm -hmm. of Alabama's all time players? I know, I know. Uh, 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 Bryce won the high control. I love Bryce. Mm -hmm. Uh. But uh, I can't say he's better than Joe Namath. I can't say that. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say he's better than uh, Snake Stabler. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I mean, there's so. And you know, how are you gonna tell me that Leatherwood is better than than John Hanna? I, I just I can't say that because I've seen these guys play. And and you know, all you can do is all you can do in your era. Yeah. And and I don't take I don't take anything from anybody. Uh, Will Anderson. One of the greatest Alabama players of all time, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and another one, uh, he don't even he, he didn't even make an All American team. He don't even get any credit, but he's one of the great off uh, great defensive linemen of all time. Uh, Payne. Yep. Yeah. One of the great. He, he was a beast. He was a monster. But he done he. Yeah, he was a monster. But yeah. people don't even they don't even think about him. Yep. Uh, well, he he didn't make an All American team. Well, you got to understand a lot of times and a lot of these lists are politics. Mm. A lot of these, like, you know, if you're talking about coaching, you know, well, savings numbers. And no, no, I know people say, I understand what they're saying. But you, don't, you can't tell me that if I gave 
Bear Bryant, Saban's team, or Saban's Bear Bryant's team, that the results ain't going to wouldn't be the same. Sure. I, I, you can't make me believe that. And you got me thinking because, now, too. Uh, and you, you bring up a really good point. It's like you can't compare, you know, like it, like – you can only be as good as kind of the era that you're in. I like that that comment because then because I love boxing, so like for example, like we can't and and there's like different eras and then there's different like weight classes and just like in football there's different eras and different positions. So like for example, like I don't know, Sonny Linston, right? Like one of the greats as a heavyweight. You can't really like compare him against like I don't know, like a Shane Mosley or something like that who was right like a middleweight. So. Um, I like right. that. I like that aspect from it. You know, that's why for me, when I did my Mount Rushmore, um, which I didn't even really think about, I kind of just did it off the eight seasons that I've been covering Alabama football. So, um, mm-hmm. and, so I went with Minka. Minka was like as polished and a well, like he was probably the one of the best spokesmen for Alabama ever. He, you know what they used to call him? They used to call him Coach Saban's son. Coach like, Saban Jr. Yes, like if Coach Saban had his son, like like a like a son, because he does. Coach Saban does have a son, but he was like saying like the similar mindset, like on the field, it was like Minka, and not like. But he was so like. I mean, I, I'll never forget like the the Jim. Remember when he won the Jim Thorpe Award? The representatives just happened to. I happened to be eating um at a at um at one of the football games, and they come up and talk to me. They're like, "What do you think about Minka?" And I was like, "He's one of like the best people I've ever met in my life." Then I have uh, Devontae right. Smith. Devontae Smith didn't have that same personality, but he had like that Mamba mentality. He was crazy. Like he just throw the ball to him, period. He'd let the work like speak for itself. I put Jalen Hurts on there because Jalen Hurts, like what, how he handled himself as a man at Alabama was incredible. He got, can you imagine a player doing that in this world with like the transfer portal, people just pack up their bags and get out of here. All right, I'm out. See ya. Like, and I get it. It wasn't the same, you know, the same circumstances. I mean, that was what, five seasons ago, whatever, Uh, but how he handled himself and came back as a teammate and, you know, helped Alabama win an SEC championship. I'll never forget that. And then I have Landon Dickerson. Then I have Landon Dickerson because Landon Dickerson was like, I don't know. He was just, all Alabama, and he wasn't even originally recruited to play at Alabama. He was at Florida State, and then when he State. came here, mm-hmm. I don't know. He was just like that country boy, Bama, Alpha. Doesn't you know? Just walk in here with overalls and just take care of business. I don't know. I like those guys. Oh yeah, I mean no doubt about it. I mean at the end of the day, Alabama has had so many. So many great, great mm-hmm. players. We don't even mention good players' names. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, just they're very, very good players. Nobody even mentions their name anymore. Mm-hmm. We've had so many great players. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just, I, I mean, it, it would be. I would have to sit here. And I've been an Alabama fan for a long time. I'd have mm-hmm. to sit here and just try to go through my head, man. It, it would make my head hurt. Yeah, it's uh, and then you'd leave somebody out. You'd leave, you know, you leave plenty and off. You'd leave some, right, you'd leave somebody out. It's crazy to think about, like Der- Deron Payne. He, you're right. He was a monster, and we don't even like, we don't even mention him. <laughs> it's no, crazy. they're not gonna mention. <laughs> never made a, never made the first team. And, and here, here's some. A lot of people may not believe. Julio Jones never made a uh, All American team. Mm. That's now, think about that. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I, That's right. He I never didn't made. Know that. A, he, he was never a first team All American. That That's so, right. He never was. That's crazy. <laughs> so it just goes to show you that the, the level of talent has come through the University of Alabama. Mm. And, of course, you know, the, the instrument is only as good as the person that's using it. And mm. so we've had great users, Bear Bryant and, 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 and Coach, mm. uh, because they have got the most out of that talent. And uh, 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 here's some a lot of people don't know. Do do you know who encouraged uh, uh, Jalen Hurts to go to Oklahoma? Uh, I I don't know. Was it who was it? Nick Saban. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna he say Saban. Yeah. That's right. Nick Saban told him. So you need to go mm-hmm. where they got the uh, passing game and learn, learn the passing game, and you'll be a pro, and you you will be a pro. Yeah. That's why he went to Oklahoma. Yeah. And and what was fire about Jalen so too is he got, he graduated. Yeah, and he graduated from here, walked here at Alabama, and then he got his master's right. degree at Oklahoma. That's right. 
because he still says they asked him, they asked him something before the Super Bowl last year, and his answer was straight out of Nick Saban's playbook. Mm-hmm. We just got we got to be ready. We got to be prepared. He was he was he was sounding like Coach Saban himself. So the, the you know again we have been so we, as Alabama fans we're actually spoiled because I never will forget I, I was at a car shop one day and this guy was putting my tires on my on my car. He was saying, "Man, this was about uh, uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm tired of this. Mm-hmm. What are you tired of, man?" Man, Alabama just beating the crap out of everybody. I want to see some close football games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. I told him he couldn't believe me. I said, I don't care if it's 100 to nothing in the first quarter. I'm going to watch every minute of it. <laughs> um, I sure am. Um, I, I'm not going to turn the channel. I, 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 I've seen us. I've seen us when we were on. Now, see, I'm going to make some people mad now. When we were at Auburn's level, uh, we just, we just want We just hope we can win. We we had gotten to that point in our with like with the coaches we had, and especially under uh, under Shula, we had got to a point where we just were we were just hoping to win, mm. not not having expectation and a standard to win as Alabama's always at. That's where Alabama football had gotten to. People got to remember where we were when, when Saban came. Mm-hmm. Man, we were at the bottom. Yep. And, and, and it was it was it was just sad. I'll never forget we played we were playing Tennessee. We had we had spanked Tennessee up and down the field. This during during the Shula era, spanked Tennessee up and down the field. And here it is, fourth and one. Shula calls timeout, and then calls timeout uh, uh, for uh, 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 a play that was horrible, and they end up going into overtime and losing the overtime. And so that when Nick Saban came, that restored the Alabama tradition, Alabama's legacy, and Alabama. They see, they can say whatever they want. We, we're the Yankees. Yep. They hate us, yep. and I know they hate us. <laughs> they, you, you, they can say, you know, they can say that pat you on the back. You know, and, uh, uh, again, uh, I'm gonna hurry up and get off, but I'm gonna tell this story. I had a, I had a show you how bad the hatred was for Alabama. Everybody would say this. Well, I'm 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 not a I'm a I'm an SEC fan. As long as Alabama's not playing my team, they, you you really believe Tennessee is rooting for Alabama? You believe that? A <laughs> uh, Georgia fan is rooting for Alabama. Ain't no way in the world. I'm not rooting for Tennessee, and I'm not rooting for Georgia. <clears throat> and when I was a kid, this is my last summer get off, Kyle. I was a kid. I was working uh, working on the on the uh, at a at a army base, Redstone, Austin, here in Huntsville. And uh, my boss was a Tennessee fan. And uh, and my supervisor was an Alabama fan, mm-hmm. and Alabama was just had beat Tennessee about eleven times in a row, and then they had just uh, 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 went eleven and one at that year. And he said, "I tell you what, Alabama's going undefeated. They're gonna win the national championship. I guarantee it." He said, "You guarantee it? You want to bet?" <laughs> he said, "Yeah, I want to bet. I will bet you a hundred dollars Alabama don't win the national champ." Uh, he said, "He says it like this: I bet you a hundred dollars Alabama don't win a game this, uh, uh, don't go undefeated this year." He said, "I'll take that bet." The, the Tennessee guy said, "Pay me." He said, "Pay you? What are you talking about? Alabama lost a bowl game January, so they lost a the game this year. Give me my money." <laughs> and you know what the guy did? He paid him a penny a day. Until he paid it, and they never spoke another word to each other. <laughs> uh, good stuff, Coach Darrell. I appreciate you, man. Always a good call, man. I appreciate you rapping with us this morning. All right. <laughs> Always my pleasure, Kyle. All right, man. Take it easy, Coach. All right, that was uh, Coach Darrell uh, batting uh, cleanup for us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Going to bring in uh, our boy, Matt. Um, actually, I'm going to go with this direction right here. Give me one second. Merrill, what's up, man? How you doing? Yo, what's going on? How you guys doing today, man? Hey, man. I, I want to um, start off real quick uh, breaking down um, some film. Um, let's see if we can do this real quick. All right. So I got some footage. Um, I asked uh, a website. I want to go uh, this this direction right here. Can we get this on the screen? Um, let's see if we can do this. We got some footage of, um, Austin Mack. Okay. okay. And, mm-hmm. um, I asked sports idol, who's the, the original owners of this, um, clip, if they could, if we could use it. 
Okay. And they said, sure. So this is Austin Mack. And um, so uh, so I'm messaging with the guy on Instagram. So this, again, Sports Idol. They have a really good YouTube channel. I think they have more YouTube subscribers than us, like 119. So it's a, a big uh, oh. YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. They're really good content. And uh, I was like, cool. I appreciate it. And he was like, uh, by the way, um, he was like, you know, that Austin Mack's probably closer to 6'8". And I was like, like really? really? And he was like, Austin Mack is probably one of the best people you will ever meet in your life. It was like, he is <laughs> one of the nicest human beings on earth. I was like, really? So I was wow. like, oh, that's what's up. So um, let's do a little uh, film breakdown. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of just get your thoughts on him real fast. Uh, again, um, this is, uh, let me just edit this up. And then T, if you could cut this, um, that'd be great. Um, let me just kind of size this up so it looks a little bit better. And then we'll do a little uh, walk and talk about Alabama's uh, freshman uh, quarterback. You've had a little bit of time to see him, right, as well, Mel? Yeah, yeah, man. I've, I've watched a little bit of his highlights. Um, I really like him. You, you know what's interesting, too, is like for him, uh, and I, maybe I'll wait a second, but you let me know when we're good, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's, uh, let's um, and I think I can screen record, too, but maybe T on backup. Yeah. All right, so uh, three, two, one. Hey, what's good, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson along with Merrill from the Merrill Report right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Today, we are talking about Alabama quarterback Austin Mack. All right, so we're going to talk about these quarterbacks. But I was talking um, with the owner of this footage, who is uh, from Sports Idol. And look, I saw some footage on him working out uh, over spring break, caught my eye, asked him if I could use some of his footage, said yes. And he's like, by the way, before you um, you know go, he's like, I think you should know that Austin Mack is one of the most he was, he's the genuine soul. He's like, was one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And he's like, and also he's probably closer to six, eight. So um, here with Merrill, just to kind of break down um, just some film, get some Intel, as you know, um, Merrill in Washington um, and um, knows about, you know, DeBoer system. So let's talk about this footage real quick. And by the way, this was absolute dart. What do you think about yeah. Austin Mack coming in? Um, he's a freshman, a lot to work on, but you know, we have some footage to go over. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I think uh, I think Austin honestly is a great fit, uh, especially for DeBoer's system. But I mean, he's going to excel at Alabama. I mean, mm-hmm. with the targets that he'll get through recruiting, that are, the guys that are already there um, <clears throat> to go along with him with this freshman class that he came in with. Granted, he's a transfer, right? But mm-hmm. at the same time, these are all the guys that he would have come in with because Austin uh, graduated early and went to University of Washington. What is also pretty cool about him, right, is he had that time to study under Penix. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. Everyone talks about how smart Penix is, right, and how he's able to really dissect the field, understand the playbook. And then on top of that, like his his ability to articulate uh, this offense is is phenomenal. So for Austin to get in early, have that time to work under Penix uh, and see the way Penix sees the field. Break, you know, pick his brain. That's huge. Anytime you get a mentor like that, um, that is obviously going to potentially be first round, second, early second round draft pick with Penix. Um, Mac gets to kind of experience that while he's at Washington. What's also interesting, I think, with Mac is like we again we talk about his size. Like the guy, the guy is a monster, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of gives you that like Cam Newton size wise look, right? Maybe a little skinnier, but. He's huge. He's athletic. We see that in, the, in his last move, getting outside the pocket, moving, and then making that throw on the run. And that throw also is like right down the line. I mean, it's, it's absolutely yeah. phenomenal. He'll stand in the pocket too. This, that's what stood out to me is watch this clip right here. So what you're going to see mm-hmm. is the, the pocket's going to collapse. He's going he's gonna to roll out to his right. And mm-hmm. I think for what he lacks in terms of like that escapability, just because he's a big dude, and I think yeah. he, he's going to gain more – um, you know, physical attributes as he continues to work with his coaching staff. Um, mm-hmm. But from right here at the high school, and th- this is high school footage, and I have some footage of him over spring break as well that I'm going to play. But look look at this. So he's got the long legs. It's, it's coming up next. He's going to roll to his right, and he's going to be able to put the ball right on the money so he can throw on the run. He has some good athleticism. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, he's, he's a six. This is it right here. So he's going to be yep. able to escape. Pushes off and then he throws it right, right on the line right there. So, uh, and this, I think this is another clip as well where the where he gets out of the pocket and he's mm-hmm. able to throw on the run right there. I mean, it's a big dude. I was surprised. It was like six eight. I think they advertised him at six six. Um, mm-hmm. What else do you like about his game with him coming in? Because you know, you you look at the quarterback room for Alabama and before um, 
this season, last year you had Eli Holstein and then you had, um, you know, Tyler Buckner who transferred and you had Julian Sane who was here and then he left. But this year, I feel like the quarterback room overall is better top to bottom than it was last year. I agree. Uh, I, I mean, and the reason I say that is because you, we do have a really strong competition in that room right now. Um, and then with Austin coming in, I think a lot of guys maybe didn't give him as much um, credit for how good he really is. I, I feel like he could potentially be if he wouldn't have graduated early, right? He would have been one, two quarterback in, in, in the class for this last 2024 class. So uh, ranking wise, I mean, the guy graduates early, but he still was one of the top quarterbacks. I thought that was pretty phenomenal. Um, and then the next part too, is this guy, you look at like overall his numbers and yep. I don't have them down pat, right? But we talk about his high school numbers for this year that he starts at Folsom, mm -hmm. right? So this is his, I, th I think it's his only season he starts. Yep. And this would be mm -hmm. his junior season that we're watching right now. Folsom High School, uh, for those who don't know, Jacob Browning came out of Folsom High School. Mm -hmm. They have put out some good quarterbacks. Jacob yeah. Browning is was killing it uh, for, for the Bengals just recently, um, this last season. So you look at him and you watch, the guy's really accurate, mm -hmm. right? Like he, he really understands like where that ball placement needs to be. Uh, his footwork is pretty good. I mean, even under pressure, I, I mean, I would like to see him maybe step into the throw instead of stepping back, but that's that's pretty common, right? But he stays in that pocket. He's not going to just hurry to get out. And I think that's what DeBoer likes about him too. His number one is accuracy. I think that was huge in his recruiting. Okay. Uh, the numbers he put up were, were like, were freaky for a high school player. I thought they mm -hmm. were impressive. I mean, I don't know if we have those, if, if, if anybody can list those out, but, um, but they were good. They were good. And then you just look at his overall, from a standpoint that we talk about character, integrity, leadership, moral yeah. values, right? All that stuff. And we hear about like the rumors about who he is as a person, just a good person, mm -hmm. right? Exactly what you want your locker room to thrive around. Okay. And that quarterback is such a huge, I mean, it's it, in, in the tra tradition of football, the quarterback, right, is the leader of the locker room. Okay. And this is the type of guy that you continue to build off of and you create that camaraderie that helps you win. And I think that's the key in, in where we look at what the board does with his teams is he finds that that guy who can lead the locker room and help that that belief in his system and what is going to happen and 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 I guess those uh, maxims as he calls them mm -hmm. right um, he he finds those guys who allow him to build off of that and make sure it builds everybody else in that that inclusive culture is huge to winning right you can't have a divided locker room mm -hmm. and to have a guy like this with that sort of that sort of character. Right. And just and, and, and willingness to just be humble, to work, understand his his role for the time being and know his shot is coming. Man, that's that's big. That's big. I'm going to put some other footage in. So we're going to pause on the video edit and we're going to add this because this was mm -hmm. um, some footage that we had. Um, let me just see if I can get that. This in. Yeah, this is it. So one second. So this is some footage, and then I'll, I'll let you get uh, to your uh, segment. This footage right here was from, uh, this is recent. This is like, I don't know, two weeks old, if that. And you can see, you know, a big, like, <laughs> I mean, he's got a, he's got a cannon. Um, he does have a cannon. He's yeah. a big dude. And um, again, this is from Sports Idol. So I just wanted to get your kind of, your take on um, the quarterback, uh, Austin Mack. I know a lot of people are excited about him and, um, can't wait to see what he brings and, and how he develops. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying like, this is the guy coming in is going to be like the guy. I have no idea. I mean, right now yeah. we know that Jalen Milrow is the guy at Alabama. Um, but in terms of like your quarterback room, who are the guys that you have? And, and this would be my last thing, Merrill, before I, um, go forward. What have you seen overall in coach Kalen DeBoer's, uh, philosophy for quarterbacks in terms of recruiting? Because, I think a lot of people probably feel, okay, you have Austin Mack coming in. You, he just wants a pro-style quarterback. But then you look to the guys that he's still going, like Juju Lewis isn't a pro-style quarterback. He's going Definitely. after you know uh, guys that are pro-style, that have escapability. What has been mm -hmm. um, his philosophy outside of Penix? What other quarterbacks um, and, and what type of quarterbacks has he recruited? Yeah, I think you look at uh, the guys he went after. Um, I, and it, it, forgive me, I can't not remember the young man's name from Washington. I'd have to pull it up. He's he ended up staying, I believe, with the, with the Huskies. Mm -hmm. um, 
he was a stud and he's now with, uh, you know, Jeff fish over at uh, Washington, the guy that he was like, maybe I think the only quarterback they brought in for that class, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. um, at Washington, granted again, Washington, Washington's hard to recruit to like it, you know, corner of a really cold rainy area in the Pacific mm -hmm. Northwest. Mm -hmm. But you look at this quarterbacks overall, that he's even targeting right now. Like we talk about Aaron Nolan, because everyone had, there's a lot of familiarity with him just due to the fact that his brother played under that system. Right. So, um he, he's one of those guys he, he wants accuracy he wants guys who understand the game or are mm -hmm. willing to put that work in to understand the game mm -hmm. i think another part of that too is is as a leader like he is big on what's your character your integrity your you know your humility you know mm -hmm. i don't need a guy out there running around getting in everyone's faces yeah i want you to get excited i want you to play but i don't i don't need i don't need i need a leader Right. Mm -hmm. I don't need somebody who's chaotic all over the place or his, mm -hmm. his emotions are up and down. DeBoer wants someone very similar, I think, to be honest, similar to himself. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it goes back to his relationships at, at Sioux Falls um, with one of his best friends. And we've talked we talked about him a lot, uh, but he ended up being the quarterback when um, when uh, DeBoer was a wide receiver at Sioux Falls. Right. Mm -hmm. And their personalities. And, and again, um, this was, uh, he was, uh, he's the indoor coach and, uh, I can't uh, the name. I, I always, I always forget his name. You guys know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Remember we were talking about him from a coaching perspective coming over. He's a championship coach. Well, I think when they look at him, right. Um, uh, I think we, we, we really look at the way DeBoer looks at these guys and he looks at like the culture that was built originally that he excelled under who mm -hmm. he is now. Because you will, you'll see DeBoer on the sideline this year. We're like a, I've said it before. We're not going to see slamming headsets. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's entertaining for sure. I love seeing it, man. It's a lot of fun during the game, <laughs> right? But uh, I mean, that's how my high school coach was. He's the man. <laughs> that stuff. <laughs> but DeBoer is very composed. Okay. I mean, even when things are wild and crazy, DeBoer is a composed leader. He is that calmness in the storm. You know, he tells the story of the buffalo, right? And why he respects the animal mm -hmm. of the buffalo, right? Mm -hmm. And I've told it before, but uh, while he's at Indiana before a, a coach's meeting, he tells the story about why he likes the buffalo. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he says it's because the buffalo faces the storm mm -hmm. and walks right into it, mm -hmm. right? That's like the board's full mentality. And I think he wants a quarterback who also has that mentality, mm -hmm. you know? And I think Penix did a great job of it last year. I think there was very few times he got shaken up. Uh, we did see it in the national championship. He just wasn't himself. Mm -hmm. We saw it in a few other games uh, last year when maybe they didn't put up points. But when Penix was hit, was was kind of following DeBoer's leadership and style, mm -hmm. uh, he was at his best. And I think you'll see that in the type of recruits he's going to bring in. Juju Lewis, I think, also has that same type of composure, which is impressive. Uh, he he kind of comes across that way um Aaron Nolan like I said uh, and then there's I mean gosh there's a number of other guys that they're that they're looking at but I think they are when it comes down to the quarterback they're looking for someone big and tall now Ju I will say this Juju maybe not might meet all of those factors uh that we typically see with yeah. what the board goes after mm -hmm. uh, but I think what they like about Juju is that he number one that accuracy is huge because in this offense like that that's what he's yeah. about. it's all about ball yeah. placement right um and can you make these throws right um that's why we're going to see austin mack probably excel when it's his turn uh, i mean the guys this guy you watch austin mack with the ball man i mean he has a beautiful deep ball mm -hmm. uh you look at all the throws he makes i mean the, he, when he rolls out and there's a cross body into the end zone for a touchdown and, and this highlight uh, coming up here but i mean it's impressive and that's the type of guy he's going to go after. He wants to see those guys with accuracy, with the right type of character and, character and integrity, who have the intangibles to be coached in the system. You need to be able to be coached. You can't just go out there and think you kind of know it all, right? We And we run into that. Uh, we do. We see that at times. But um, but I love it. You know, I mean, I, I love what he's going after as far as recruiting. And I love that. And it was Curtis Riggs. Thanks, Mert, Mert, yeah. Merton. I appreciate you, man. That's who I was going for is Curtis Riggs. Um, like, I think that's what he, I wouldn't, man, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some backside scouting yeah. going on by Curtis Riggs, Yeah, to be honest with you. Cause Curtis Riggs is supposed to be like a quarterback whisperer. Yeah. You mm. know, I, <laughs> I would be an I like interesting that. thing. I like that. Out, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, well, Curtis Riggs is taking his time. You know, Curtis isn't, he's retired now. Right. 
So maybe he's just sitting back watching film, like, hey, these are the kids. Oh, that we yeah, want to 100%. Get, man. Yeah. That, I mean, why wouldn't you? That's your best bud. And you trust <laughs> him, right? Like, I – Curtis Riggs might be doing some extra work on the side. But we all don't know. But Curtis, Curtis is a, you know, he's one of those dudes who has that character though, too. So they're looking at guys. I mean, you, that package, right, is so important to the core. Um, that's exciting. So yeah, man. Well, uh, great stuff, man. And if you guys like the content, um, definitely hit a thumbs up and uh, we'll get to the Merrill report right now. Uh, does a really great job. One of our great content creators here on Bama Football on YouTube. Killer stuff. Kind of threw that right to you, Merrill. So way to knock it out the park, man. But uh, please hit the thumbs up and uh, we will catch you guys as soon. And uh, as news happens right here on Bama Football on YouTube. But please enjoy uh, Coach Merrill and the Merrill report. It starts right now. What up, everybody? Kyle, thank you, everybody. Kyle Henderson, Bama Football on YouTube. The man, the Kyle Henderson. I love it, man. It's absolutely fantastic being on here with him and all the guys. Coach Sean, Coach Smook, T in the background, Coach Jay, love it. Coach Ty, the round table sports. Actually, uh, absolutely love these guys completely. And I don't know if you guys can throw the music on in the background for me. I, I'm still kind of learning how to do some of that, but that would be awesome. Uh, it's kind of nice to have a little... Little thing going, right? Waking Jake, Rocket Town, what's going on, man? Hey, it's nice to be back, everybody. Uh, I know I was out for a minute. If you guys jumped on last night, we got a chat with Coach Jay. Jumped on early in the theme music. I love it. I love it. Bama football, we back, baby. Love this. Love this. You know, and I like, I mean, I also give a shout out to the University of Washington Huskies because, I mean, that's. That's also my team, man. That's where I played. So, um, but I love being back here. I love, I love all the connections. I love the people. And in the end, getting back on with Kyle yesterday morning. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We cut a cool video just talking about Milro mentality. Uh, that was pretty, uh, that was a fun video. You know, it's, and like I said, some people loved it. Some people didn't because they get sick of hearing about Milro, right? Um, I don't know, man. Like for me, I think that mentality is really important as a player. You know, to show and demonstrate, like you, to hear about the fact that you put in that work. I like that mentality. I want to see guys have that mentality. If I'm a coach, I want that. I want to coach that such type of mentality, right? Uh, there's a recent article that came out talking about uh, Milro. I think it was uh, by TDA uh, talking about Milro a little bit doing some work with an NFL uh, NFL quarterback uh, coach. I think it was a previous. So that was pretty cool, man. We know he's doing that work. That video is awesome. Check it out, Bama Football on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure you run the thumbs up, become a subscriber, fan funder. Now you can just it starts at $2.99. If you want to jump in on that, see our exclusive content, make sure you do that. Have fun with that. I love being here. If you got Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter, right? Uh, at coach underscore J Mara. And it's all capital letters. Um, love it, man. I, I love being on here and, and I miss talking with you guys. So it's nice to see y'all. You know, how how many and not everybody's excited, right? Like we're getting into the second part of spring ball. Pretty, pretty interesting, pretty important time. You know, um, absolutely love the second part of spring ball, you know, and I I think it's kind of one of those time frames. I talked a little bit about it yesterday, but it's one of those time frames for guys that it, you got to lock it in. Like spring, this part of spring ball for me, this is the part where I say, man, this is where you need to focus. This is where you need to get after it, right? Because now like your spring breaks over, okay? We, we get into this, this, this installation week, okay? Like we're, we're gonna start really learning the offense uh, and the defense and putting in different packages, starting to work up from the basics. We set our foundation pretty early. Right. Uh, I mean, this is the part where you, you really, you really got to lock it in, you know? Uh, and I'll tell you, man, like that, that part is where I'm excited to see where everybody competes in that level. Kevin Lynch, what's up? I know, you know, I probably should say what's up to a few of you. Moonrock, what's going on? Lynn, how you doing, my man? Nicole, how you doing? The men splashing. What's going on? DR334, George, Jimmy Brown, Sweet Home, Bama24, what's going on? Byron Walker. My man, my man, um, like, I love it. I love it. Uh, <laughs> and that's right. We saw that. Huh? I forget the, the music gets your mic every time. I know I kind of have to, the music has to be like rolling when I get on. I think that's why I always cut my mic. It's all good. Uh, Cynthia, what's going on? Caleb King. What's up, man? What's up? And uh, congratulations on getting married, dude. Good for you, dude. I hope you guys are doing really well. Rocket Town. What's up? Uh, I know I saw a whole bunch of others in here. So uh, it's cool, man. I love that. But 
you know, and somebody brought up a comment right here. We were just talking about uh, some of the quarterbacks with the video that me and Kyle just did, uh, right? And I think it was you, Brian. Brian, let's see here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, comment. I see Deuce Knight fitting DeBoer's system better than Juju. Okay, I mean, that's that's interesting. I, I think I like the intangibles and, and what Juju brings to the table. I, I really like the way he moves. Uh, I mean, a little, little different, but he's super accurate. Got to watch some of his film camping. Um, I, I like Juju a lot. I think they both bring great skill sets, right? So I think that that's the hard part too, is when you, especially when you get to some of these guys who are all so good, whether it's Deuce, um, whether it's uh, Juju, and, and there's a number of other quarterbacks in the class right now and coming up in 2026. I mean, shoot, I saw a video last night of this kid. And I think I, think I follow him on Twitter, man. Like this kid, absolute stud i'll see if i can find it for you all real quick um but he was a was a beast last night i mean like what he was throwing i think it's j rock i think that's what he goes by on twitter man dude he was he was just out of park throwing to some friends right and he was an absolute stud uh throwing the ball i mean he he had a cannon absolute cannon and uh it's fun watching that so you're seeing some of these guys right uh, that are coming up and, and as you go through and you evaluate them, right? Like who's the most coachable? Who can really come into the system and fit? If we're talking about quarterback recruits, who is going to be in here and be like the way that the guy I want to watch, right? The guy that I, I believe can really take this on and excel within this system. So, um, and then we got another question, right? With, with uh, Byron Walker, what's up, man? Are we going to lose uh, any QBs in the, in, in the April portal? Man, it's a hard one. Hey, Jay, how you doing, man? What's up, Ronald? How are you? I don't know, you know? Uh, I don't know if we will, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's tough because you, you look at these guys from the portal aspect and, and you think about opportunity uh, and you think, well, you know, they all kind of sit down in, in, in a row, like as far as who's up next, who's up next. I think the only two that would really compete in the same year of graduation potentially is Lana Grand and uh and mac so like if ty were to stay right and jalen starts then ty gets his next coming up right would be after this year so it's it, i think it's based on what they're looking at how they're feeling i mean they 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 should all know like this is the type of system that if you get that opportunity to start you can really propel yourself into a uh, great positioning for the draft you can propel yourself into a, a great positioning for your future with football as a quarterback in the NFL. I mean, you run, you're looking at this like pro spread offense, right? So it's interesting, you know what I mean? Like we'll see if if anybody does choose to leave. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't get that feel right now. It sounds like everybody is really bought in, right? And so we'll see where we go and what happens at going after, after this kind of spring, after we get out of a day, right? Um, and then, I, I mean, it's it's uh it's cool to see we get Jared what's up my man you asked a question too what percent chance would you put on Gigi coming to Bama that's tough because uh, uh, right now you're also seeing like a lot of guys right now they they all want to come see what's going on at Bama which is super impressive I think that's man that's that's something I love that man like I love seeing that like I I think you, there's a lot of energy around Bama right now in this these recruits like all want to see what's going on in practice they want to see this offense um they want to see uh they want to see you know how are the coaches coaching these guys like are these guys going to excel i think that's a big thing for recruits to get out and see see the process right and uh and steven DeConzo, what's up man hey if you are watching run those thumbs up for me really appreciate it absolutely love you guys and, and love bringing you guys this content but again i think for the recruits getting on campus is huge right you, you get a chance to understand the atmosphere and i was talking about this with coach smook a little bit uh behind the scenes and we were just talking about like understanding that if you can get on the campus and you can get that feel you get the feel for the team and it goes back into what i just said with kyle you know you, when you're recruiting guys we're, we're recruiting dudes right and, and and bama's looking at guys with character who who are, are true to who they are are good people right and, and then they can bring it and, and when they, they get, they're here to compete right they want to compete they want to be the best okay so it's interesting to see when you bring that all together 
you get to create this this locker room that's already been here before DeVore, but I think now DeVore just gets to put his touch on it. Uh, and along with this coaching staff, this phenomenal coaching staff, can't can't give enough praise to what everybody's doing. I mean, from the from the front end to the back end, right? From the coaches on the field doing their thing to the recruiters in the back. I mean, big shout out to Ron Hodges, right? To uh, to Tavia Sanders. Um, I mean, th these guys, Courtney Morgan, uh, and that, that honestly, all those guys in the background. They're, they're, there's a number in the list, right? But those guys are really doing a great job of getting recruits on campus to get the feel of what is going on in in what's real at alabama i think that's it what's exciting i was talking about this like circle last night on the show and this circle is so important and it's important from the standpoint that uh the board comes in the circle is kind of small at first right because everyone's not sure what to do so these coaches these players they buy in and then this energy gets created and the circle grows now it grows to uh the fan base and then it grows into the recruits right and then it grows into i mean what we saw really where it's been completed now is the administration with these contracts and what they were able to give these coaches to make sure that these guys felt rewarded felt appreciated and to know that they felt trusted that they are trusted that the, that the alabama family that these guys are coming into right and, and with gillespie and roach still here right that it they trust this coaching staff. They, they trust this team. They trust what, the, what they're doing. And it just gives that motivation and that commitment and, and confirming like, hey, let's get after it. And we're seeing that with the way they get after recruits, right? And these guys get to come on here, man. Um, and they get to come on here and they get to, like as far as the recruit guys go, they get to see and feel that energy. And uh, Ronald Thompson, I see your question, man. Like, uh, let's see here. Coach Merrill, why didn't Bama pay? Gillespie at least a million. He'd been here longer and is recruiting. So Ronald, I'm pretty sure he is actually going to get that. It's all in the, there's like bonuses and um, there's other parts of the package, right? Uh, we see like a base pay. I think that's where everybody was confused maybe a little bit. Like the base pay, you're like, well, wait a minute. But I think there's other incentives behind there that you, you will see that over a million. I think honestly, last night, Coach Jay, uh, me and him were on last night watch, uh, talking and Coach Jay said, like his actually was one of the biggest with the incentives in the backside pay uh, was like 1.7 with Gillespie, if I'm understanding that. So, I mean, that's that's impressive. You know, like I, I'm all about that, man. Like it, Gillespie deserves that. Roach, I think also uh, deserves that, you know? Uh, and, and that's, I think that's what, what I was saying uh, as far as like from the incentive side standpoint. And I see obviously you guys Jeremy Sanders, what's up, my man? Uh, saying the same thing. It was all incentives based. So, um, and then uh, let's see here, man. What's up, Moon Rocket? What are you saying here? How do we match up with Tejas for our Tejas fan in that chat? Yeah, yeah, help me with that one, Moon Rocket. I don't know what, what you're asking on that, man. <laughs> but, but I love it. You know what I mean? As far as these recruits getting in here and uh, getting to feel that, we see a lot of guys coming to field. A lot of dudes, man. Uh, Jared, I got you, Texas, Texas. Oh, I see what you're saying, man. I see what you're saying. Okay. All right, got you. Got you, got you. Uh, Spanglish for you. Hey, man, it's all good. How do we match up? Fan in the chat. So, with Texas, for our Texas. I mean, here's where I think, like, match up with Texas-wise. I think our talent, we got a lot of returning guys coming back. Uh, we Yes, we, we lost some key dudes going to NFL. I, I respect that. Like, I hope they have the, the best careers in the NFL. They're going to be studs. But I do think this next year, man, like, I think what we're going to see this next year with Alabama football is you, you, you got to almost look back at Washington for, for a minute in, in the craziest way. You're like, what? Why, why would you look back at Washington? And here's, here's why. It's because DeBoer just took a team at Washington, talented team, definitely maybe not as good on defense as what alabama has right um but i'll say this is from that standpoint right like you look at that washington team and what they were able to do against texas on big stage twice two years in a row when it, i mean when you got texas he's supposed to have the, like all these weapons and then it has a defense that's that's lights out so i mean it's hard to sit there and and, and honestly say like okay texas beat Alabama under a different system 
right, under a different mindset maybe early on in the season too. I don't know if they would have beat Alabama late in the season, to be honest with you. I, I, I truthfully don't think it would have happened. So that's a tough one, you know, but I, I, I think, you know, we look at this next year, Alabama looking looking good if we if we look at that matchup standpoint. So um, and then, you know, we got to say, too, from a recruiting standpoint, it just goes back and to say and like, look at all the excitement around what's going on. And I think it, I think here's another part to that, too, because we'll each each subject will also talk about recruiting. You know what I mean? Because it all relates because all the players get to see it. The guys who want to figure out where they want to go. Okay. Like, I mean, and then you'll catch up later today with coach Smook, who's going to have some big news on recruiting. Maybe, maybe talk here and there. Like it's good. coach Smook will be on here in about a half an hour or so, 45 minutes or so. We'll have some interaction, but make sure you guys are all tuning in today. Run those thumbs up. Um, if there's any players or any recruits in the chat, say what's up. You know, we got amazing fan base undefeated. Love you guys. So, but, Another thing I wanted to bring up was was this player mentoring. You know what I mean? And we kind of seen it a little bit with uh, just recently, I think you had Campbell working out with uh, Sterling Dixon. Uh, and then it was Justin o Okoronko. Yeah, Okoronko, right? And then you had Jalen Hale with Bubba Hampton. And then we've seen, besides that, you've also seen like Malachi Moore and some of the other DBs working out with, I mean, the, the list of our dudes, you know, all of our freshman guys out there working out. That was, that was impressive, man. That was impressive. And it's cool to see that because that camaraderie, um, that that's pretty huge. You know, uh, I, I really like to see like the, the aspect of these guys and being highlighted for mentoring the young guys and getting them up to speed as quickly as possible. Um, that that is a big part if you're a recruit or you're a young guy trying to figure out where you want to go part of feeling like home is feeling included okay like if you if you get there and you're not sure where you stand in the locker room or what, where your place is at or you're trying to feel comfortable still after you make a commitment it's probably not the place you need to be right like if you're a young guy you're a recruit and you're going through this process you know you're going to see all these different places like where where do you see guys who feel at home that feel included and and that's going to be the biggest thing and then when we we look at this player mentoring and what they're doing for each other um you know i i, I mean that's that's something that should call out to a lot of these young guys figuring out where home is you know i saw micah debosi right offense tackle stud i believe offense tackle I want top ones in this this upcoming this or this class 2025 you know he was saying like where's home and a lot of guys like Hayes Fawcett does a phenomenal job with their recruits where he posts stuff about them and and, and obviously the, all their offers or where they're, they're you know narrowing down their list and trying to figure out where they should go and then you know they're all like hey where's home right so you, that's what you got to ask yourself you know and Shane I do see your question real quick we'll jump right back in this Shane asked uh, Jake Random would it be legal for a coach Saban and former Bama players in the NFL to form their own collective? No, I don't think so. It's private too, by the way. So we wouldn't even know who who's in there if I'm correct. So um, I don't think it would be illegal at all. I mean, it's like I said, there's like no rules <laughs> right now, it seems like. So uh, I think they'd be good to go if they really wanted to. So, but I do, I do think though, um, that's a good point, Jeremy Sanders. That's if Saban's still employed as a um, uh, by the university in any fashion, but I don't know, man. Like that's a different thing with the collective and stuff, man. I'm not. I, there's so much that's going to change with that. I'm not so much worried about like NIL and collective. I just think each guy deserves to get paid, and, and there's a structure to it, and they'll figure that out um, as a player coming in and, and giving up all your time. That's pretty big. But jumping back to what I was saying with the with the recruits and and understanding these guys like what how to figure out where home is right with micah asking that and a lot of guys asking like where do i go like you know and they kind of have a general idea but the the idea would be like how do we how do we make you feel included how do you feel like this is this is a spot where you need to be you know there's so many there's so many places that you will go there's a lot there's so many places that you'll see and you'll get this feeling I'm like, oh man, this is cool. This is exciting. Look at all this stuff. But, you know, um, it's not necessarily about that. It's about obviously 
where where do you excel under because of how comfortable you are and because man you love the guys you're you're doing it with you know it's like it's like in the you know being part of a group and and whether it's uh working out right like you see kyle doing these workouts every day with this men's group uh i think it's, it's men's group but this is pretty cool because every morning you're included you're it's you're getting after it and you do it all together and there's just this camaraderie there's this bond and i tell you man if you as the recruits if you can come in there and get that feel hence why we're seeing these guys uh working out with with the younger guys and getting off on that man like and making sure that they're catching up that they understand the standard that's that's what it's about you know what I mean? Like that's that's like peer. You mentor a guy or you help coach a guy up, you are gonna learn more. So what we're seeing is is we're seeing our upperclassmen coaching up our our new guys coming in on campus, getting them up to speed as quickly as possible, building that brotherhood even stronger. And then I think like you know like for them, like they now get this chance to to do the same with each class after after that. And I, and I love it, man. Like that's that's what's about, and that's what DeVore's about, and that, that's why I'm excited to see how they're generating so much attention, so much attention in their recruiting atmosphere, you know. But it's another thing too. And, and Caleb, you kind of brought this up, you know. I think where's homes to generate attention, see where the most support is coming from, uh, and you know, I think 80% of the time they know where they're going. I, yeah, I mean that could be part of it did you yeah we're generating attention we're getting excitement out there it, and it's an exciting time they deserve that they've worked really hard to get that opportunity uh to, to play college football to play at the highest level of college football um that's pretty cool like yeah build that up but i think legitimately some guys actually ask you know like where, where is home like what where is the fan base excited where where do i get to go and and just keep keep rocking this momentum because that's what it is the recruiting process as your recruitment picks up it's momentum right so how do we how do we get that going you know and that's what we go into also though is recruiting is a complete addiction <laughs> recruiting is an addiction uh it's very early in the recruiting uh season the process um yes recruiting has been going on for a long time you know but um i'll tell you like from a standpoint of this it is very early on so you're going to see guys jump off you know we had Zeke Hel uh, helton i think it is he jumped off just recent which is cool like 2026 interior office lineman uh stud uh respect him though man I, I respect his decision i get where he's coming from you know like take your time take your time you know like i i i, I get i get that but at the same time, like don't don't lose sight of what you've already kind of got a feel for and what you appreciate. You saw that with Antonio Coleman, right? Like he, he kind of got a feel, he kind of looked at some other spots. And then when he was able to really see and understand what was going on at Bama, you know, he came right back in and said, Hey, this is this is what's best for me. And I I, I respect that. So um I, I I like that aspect. And I like to see these guys take their time, work it out, figure it out. But as soon as you know, then just do it. And once you once you make that commitment, stick to it, right? Stick to it. Like once you find out we're home, don't just do it for likes. Don't do it for clicks. Don't do it for all these things. Do it because that's where home is. You know what I mean? And then then just get to work because now you have an advantage. You found your place, and now you get to keep. Now you get to roll, right? Um, and so it's cool. It's cool to see what these guys are doing at work. And like I said, this this is that time frame for now that the, they've come back from spring break and they're into this installation week uh it's impressive to see what position groups that are really going to come through and pick up the fastest i think the wide receiver group might be one of the more complicated ones because there is a lot of precision around it obviously we talk about quarterbacks a lot and, and that will be tough but i would the wide receiver group and it's so large the, 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 there's a lot of wide receivers and a lot of guys who can make plays so who is going to stand out like where does caleb odom sit you know what i'm saying like where does he sit within that group i think he is he's fantastic it's cool to see um him getting into that wide receiver room it gives a unique weapon in the red zone it gives a unique weapon downfield it gives a unique weapon on honestly all over the field but overall who else are, are our guys we start we're hearing a lot about bubba hampton i mean and i coach sean big bubba hampton guy and i i mean i like bubba Hampton too but the guy's just a worker just a stud gets after it you know um i'm excited to see amari jefferson right like 
uh, Jefferson is is one of those dudes I was really high on watching him uh, and watching his his film, just the way he high point the ball, the way he get after it, and of course, you know, we got we got the rest of our guys who on that field are absolute studs. There's so many that you can go through that list in the wide receiver room. So who's picking up these concepts the fastest? Who is able to pick up the concept while going 110%, right? Um, and you're right. Like, yeah, we saw that Jeremy Sanders. They were all practicing together in spring break. Smart move, you know, smart move. It's a lot like what Booker was doing with the offensive line group and getting Parker Brailsford and saying, hey, we're going to have a watch party of University of Washington football and we're going to sit down all together as an offensive line group and learn this concept, learn these schemes, learn how to communicate better. Get, get ready to watch this offensive line dominate. Dominate. These guys are, these guys are focused. Um, I mean, they are focused. Like, to hear that, to hear that they're like, you know, we're so tired of hearing about all these people tell us this and that, or we need, we need to do these things different, you know, like, like or that we were we were garbage or all the you know what i mean we couldn't hold a block like this offensive line these guys are going to come out ready to rip like i that's in a position group for me i'm i i would be most excited to watch finishing out spring is because there is some serious competition in those in some of those spots especially at tackle and who's gonna who is gonna separate themselves from the group and, and or can you right like does everybody just excel at the same time you know what i mean so uh, I'm excited for that offensive line group and to see even as we get into A day, but especially we get in that first scrimmage, uh, what they look like and, and how they're already, are, if, right, if, we can also say if, they're already flowing. They're already in their groove. Because um, that that's a huge part to have working as offensive line. That is one single unit. It is not about an individual dude making a play. They all have to function together. They have to understand each other. You have to understand how to communicate and move together, right? To create this offense and to give it life. I don't think that's like your heartbeat right there, right? Your, your own line, that's your heartbeat. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm excited to see how this group is coming together and to hear that the guys in, in the room are really excelling in their like leadership roles in willingness. What's, what's cool? Again, I go back into being inclusive, right? Bringing guys in. Hey man, Parker's coming in, and him, by the way, him and uh, Brockmeyer are putting together a, a heck of a duel. It sounded like in the first couple of days of like wanting to work and like prove who's better. You know, like I mean, that's pretty. That's that's phenomenal. I love to hear that because they're just going to make each other better. You know, um, and Glenn, Glenn Fiddler. I'm worried about left tackle. Who do you see there, Merrill? I mean, that's a that's a heck of a question, Glenn. I think that's the part that part that we are all waiting to see um smook might have some really good kind of back on that when he jumps on we'll have to ask that question again because smook might have that i think um if they i'm not sure if it was formby right was it maybe they were talking about formby a little bit too at tackle i mean it sounds like he's playing just in those first couple of days now we're only in spring you guys got to remember that this is just spring ball so we're not quite there yet uh, as far as like really evaluating in, in depth, right? Um, like, so it's hard to say like who's going to stick out in what position, especially on offensive line. Because like some guys will come out just because they got, they got, uh, you know, have a lot of excitement. The, the energy's there. So they come out early in spring and they're just moving, excited, ready to go. But how do, do they maintain that energy? Do they maintain that, that level of, um, uh, commitment of dominance through the finish of spring into fall ball because you, you see it a lot you see it a lot you see it a lot you know there's a heck of a quote online and i just re recently like yeah everyone talks and everybody shows up when there's no pads but then when pads come on now you start to really see who's real and who's not like that's and that's the truth like in the end of the day you know like who's going to show up and who's going to move um but i do think like overall i think the offensive line is ready to kick ass and take names man they're going to roll and uh and yeah and that from what's up man how you better find a center i mean are we talking about uh yeah that's right smook was high in mcveigh and mcveigh's putting in that work man i'm impressed with that yeah and, and formed me at right tackle but 
uh you better find a center man what where, where are we coming out with that from I'm, I'm just you know i think we got a center no matter what with parker brailsford uh the dude is a stud that guy's an all-american i i think we i, f- I feel good about that Ephraim. you know what i'm saying um unless she's saying something else but uh, all good but uh but yeah so we'll see man like offensive line group man i just think all those dudes coming together and putting in that work it'll be interesting to see the transfer portal too that's going to be another aspect that we we are not talking about uh, i don't think there hasn't been as, as much um kind of talk about the transfer portal not so much guys leaving alabama and you're right like that competition is wide open Ephraim. i get what you're saying at center competition is wide open all over the field i don't know where everybody thinks like that guys just have a job just because Jalen milro get mentioned a few times right just because like you know i i'm a i'm a i support Jalen milro i want him to do awesome doesn't mean he's gonna start i'm gonna tell you that right now now i i i like the work he's putting in i like his mentality I'm not saying he's going to start though. All the competition everywhere is wide open. I mean, there's probably maybe like two positions. Hmm. I mean, you guys could correct me if I'm wrong, but I would for sure say there's two dudes who will start <laughs> and that's Booker and Roberts. Those dudes are animals, man. Those dudes are beasts. But, um, I learned that I do think the competition is, I mean, it's wide open. And I also love what they're doing in practice too. And if you guys haven't noticed, man, like, uh, with how they kind of rotate in the freshmen with with like some of the starters or what are portrayed as starters right now again they don't just because you're seeing guys out there starting right now does not mean they're going to start going into fall i will i will promise you that uh that does not work like that uh what the way it does work though is from this standpoint is these dudes they they want to see how the group flows like, so if there's, if there's a set suit, set group of guys on the field and all these guys are playing, right? Um, like 100%, like they, they are, they got the concept down. You got this group of guys, they're flowing really, really well. If we integrate like a freshman or we integrate someone different, does the group maintain and does that guy not maintain or does he, does he excel and help the group get better? That's why you're going to constantly see, that's what spring is testing. We're testing the way personnel works together to be the best it can be going into fall. And then in fall, we, we really get to put the pieces into solid place to go into the season. So a lot of guys don't, they don't kind of look at, look at it that way. And I get you, Jay, I hear what you're saying, man. Like Jay Townsend said this, man, and, uh, Jay, Jay will definitely start. He's proven himself to coach the boar every day. Hey man, like I like I said, I, I think that work ethic is there. I just don't want to. The thing is with a lot of guys, if we just sit out there and we say all day, like, hey, this guy is is for sure this, 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 and this. And like I said, there's maybe only like two, maybe three guys out there who can say that about, maybe. Um, but in the end of the day, I don't want to, especially in those sort those sort of positions, it's hard to sit there um, and just nominate somebody because the board will open. He does open that competition. I'll tell you right now, like he did it at Washington. Now it's not the same level of competition there from the standpoint of you, you kind of had more of a drop off at quarterback than what we see here, right? Like here you have a lot of guys who are, who are studs. I mean, that entire, that entire quarterback room is phenomenal. But like, look at the running backs. This, uh, the running back room is another impressive one, right? Like who does who who gets the starting carries? Like how do you how do you pick that? And so it's all going to be. And I kind of said this with Kyle yesterday. That's another group for me. I'm I'm excited to watch because you have some tandems in there that you could work with. Um, you know that just can really blow up going into the season, right? Uh, and I want to see which guys really stick out and, and pick up on these concepts and these installations as it continues to roll into fall uh, and into the end of spring. Because the faster you pick up on the concepts, the faster you play, right? So it's like, you know, you're a freshman in high school, okay, going to play varsity, right? You you, you might, hopefully, you, you got the skill set to do it, but it might take you a minute to understand the full dynamic, the full concept, the full scope a varsity ball compared to eighth grade freshman ball, right? Um, same thing goes into college, right? When you're a freshman coming into college, you got some guys who just naturally pick this up ASAP, 
Like they get after it real fast. And these concepts are easy for them to grab. I like the fact that on defense, we will see that. Like the, the concepts are easier to grab on defense. I think that helps our secondary tremendously. I think it helps the freshmen. And on top of that, like you have these players, like I said, who are mentoring each other, are mentoring the younger guys to help pick up on, on the concepts quicker too. But how do we, how do these guys get a full grasp of what they're supposed to do in this offense from a full standpoint of saying, all right, you got, you got these sort of concepts being installed this week. How fast can you pick up on that? Because the faster you pick up on it, the faster you will play. So that's going to be a big one to see. And that's, that's what we're really kind of getting into, man, this week. Like this week is going to be exciting. I'm excited to hear about um, if we got kind of any feedback today. I know we got practice starting, starting back up today. Tomorrow, I think there's, um, there is, I don't know if, if tomorrow, I got to look back at the schedule. But I know at some point we're going to have some footage, right? Because you get to go back and there's sort of, maybe there's some media and, and access to practice again for the media, which is, which is fun to watch. You get to really see these guys out there competing. This is going to be the week where you get to see it too. Um, you're going to see where guys maybe have a, a, a quicker step than others because as the installations happen, guys got to think a little more, right? Right. So when, and now it's not just pure athleticism. You got to have football IQ too. Uh, football IQ, that's a big one. And that's what we're about to see even going into A day. Uh, and then it's just a grind from there. Now these guys got to go. Like the season, like I said, this is the week. The season, yeah, the season starts after the next one ends. But this is the week where it really starts to happen to, until we get to the, the full season, just because you got to be ready. Right. Everything you're doing now, um, yeah, you got your school, which is extremely important. Make sure you take care of your education, right? But at the same time, you got to be studying and preparing yourself after spring ends going into fall. And especially if you, if, especially if you want to start, you know, you talk about the guys who want to start and you imagine, I would imagine based on the standard of Alabama, every guy wants to start. Every guy should com be competing every day to start. Every guy should be doing every single thing they can, right? To start. Like I, Alabama, man, I just think, um, and Lynn Merrill, I think next week is where we'll start seeing who impressed the coaches. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll see what the coaches will get a better opinion for what they want. Like next week, uh, for sure. But I think like it, uh, for, 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 from what I know from playing, right. Is that I know like this week, the installation week is pretty huge, man. Pretty huge on guys, how, how quickly guys pick stuff up. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, like guys, if this is that week, they really need to put in their focus and it can be, it can kind of be exhausting because you're coming back from spring break and you, you just want to make sure your mind's fresh. That's why I got a lot of respect for all the, the guys who are out there, um, out there kind of focusing on that and, uh, putting that work in during spring break. I like that. I mean, that's what you should be doing period. But I mean, that, that is something that you want to do everything you can to make sure you're ready to go to so you're, you're locked in now and that's why my first subject was time to lock it in because it this is a time like if you're a player and, and this is the week where you need to focus in and start picking up these concepts because if you miss one or let's say let's say you, you don't understand maybe two or three of them and you haven't said anything yet right um you know like that's you haven't said like you didn't understand this concept and now they're moving every day to something new, you are going to get left behind. Do not, like, they cannot let that happen. And Caleb, we addressed the March Madness actually yesterday. Me and Kyle talked about it. Uh, if you go back and watch in the morning, uh, me and Kyle went over some of the March Madness stuff. It was good. It was good. You can check it out. Uh, we play that live. But, but yeah, man, like, do not get left behind. That's what these guys, a lot of guys need to focus on that going into, uh, like this week, obviously they're probably doing it on us over the last few weeks with what they've got to see. But and Lynn, that's that's a good point. Like they need to be in that playbook. Like it's huge, it's huge. And if you're a new guy, uh, you're a freshman now. Like you probably have already started to dig in and learn from some of the guys who've come over, especially on the offensive side, which is which is pretty pretty awesome. I mean, you got everybody except uh, you got everybody except a running back. <laughs> From for at least one guy from Washington on the offensive side of the ball, uh, so I love that. But uh, you really want to dig in, understand these concepts, and uh, get yourself mentally prepared so that way you can see the breakdown as each day uh, or each session of practice 
there could be a, a new installation. It might not be huge, but it would be, and we'll see how the coaches decide to run it. Like when the media gets some access, right? Um, you know, I'll tell you this, uh, at Washington, how long did it take to learn the new system? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, we were playing back then on our uh, three, four. So a little different, a little more complicated because uh, three, four has so many different variations, but uh, this, that th that's on defense though. I think the defense, what's beneficial of this defense, uh, Alabama with the four, two, five granted, it's a three, four nickel, basically. I mean, that's what it is, right? Like it, you kind of heard Womack talk about it. He goes, there's not actually many differences in the defense. And I love defense. That's my favorite part. What well, offense is fun to watch and break down. Like it, it's cool to see like where you can take advantage of an offense, right? Based on the way guys line up and tendencies. That's what I loved uh, when you're watching film. But the defensive side, I love learning the defense from a standpoint of, you know, how to make that defense flow uh, in a very smooth way, right? So like the it's like a domino effect right the guy in front of you moves the next guy moves the next guy moves to create this like fluid uh fluid fluid wall of, that you can't penetrate which is pretty amazing uh if you have a good defense and they understand that that flowing concept which is very much why this 4-2 swarm d that's that's what it's about right this flowing concept so it it takes away all these advantages all within um precise movement but at the same time, allows guys to play open and free and with natural ability based on their what they see in front of them. So it's exciting from that aspect that this is a little more easier to understand. But Womack did say, you know, even after the meetings he's had with Saban, like pretty, pretty impressive from that standpoint. Like, I like that. And I'm, I, I like that Womack is meeting with Saban just to correlate and understand like his philosophy. How do we continue that? And how do we bring it all together as one, you know? And then Tim, I, you saying like the D line gets after people, man. Like, dude, I, that, that D line, I think is going to, I think we're going to see some monsters coming out of that D line. And you're right, Todd, like that, the D line, your anchor is like that nose tackle, right? Like he is, he is very, very important. So I'm excited to see though, but that's the thing is our D line, our guys are studs. And I love what they're doing with Keeley. I think, if I were Keely, I would be all about this. Like if I was Keon, I'd be like, dude, put me on that that bandit. Let me let me pack on some muscle some more. Let me use my speed and my advantage. Let me get after people. Because it's you're gonna see different variations and different packages based on uh or just different, I guess, blitz variations and rush packages that allow us to take advantage of guys' talent in the system. You know? Um I love that, man. Like that's it's it's amazing you know and glenn i've never thought of teaching football defense with a basketball principles that's es essentially that's the way it's looked at right like i mean that's the way i've looked at it is all sports work together you play in different sports it all works together right so you can take things from basketball you can take things from baseball you can take things from all over to understand how to put these concepts together that are easily teachable that's another key aspect of coaches that if you're a coach and you or you're trying to be a coach how do you how do you make sure your message what you're communicating what you're teaching is coming across to guys because if they don't understand it you could say the coolest shit in the world but if a dude doesn't understand what you're saying then it it's not cool at all because no one's going to see what you just coached or what you just taught right so that's what i'm that's what i'm saying is like i think for a lot of guys what i love about this staff is they, they do a very good job this coaching staff does a great job of helping guys understand all these concepts big that's huge that's huge as a coach right i mean that was that was probably one of the biggest things for me man like when i was coaching it was like i want to make sure that my guys understood what i was saying and if they didn't like you need to let me know like you need to tell me right um and so like going back into that and what we were kind of saying with these guys and with keely right like i i I think this is this is huge for him. I think it's big. I think as soon as he gets gets down some more technique, right, um, and and really j just continues to buy into what he's doing, I think he got Roach there. That's really going to help him excel. And overall, I think this defense would would just be even more beneficial, right? Like how, that's what guys are saying. Like, like, hey, we're not moving you because we don't think you're good at this or this. 
we're trying to put you in positions uh, to get you on the field. Like hopefully that for a lot of these guys, they feel real good about that. You know what I mean? Like if you're a guy and you're like, man, I want to get on the field, right? Like, okay, let's be open, right? Uh, let's be open to moving dudes all over uh, in, in just in case in different spots. So that way you can get your reps on the field. You get in that game. And who knows, man? You, you, I hear stories all the time of like guys getting like pissed off. They're like, man, I didn't want to move. And then I made that move and it was the best thing ever happened to me. And I ended up going to the NFL and, you know, being this good and winning a Super Bowl or two, right? So you hear about that a lot with guys switching positions. So, and that's, man, that's, that's the way to go. Be open to that and be thinking about that. You know what I mean? Um, so it's exciting time. Alabama football. I know we got Smoot coming in here soon, guys. It's going to be awesome. Love it. Love it. Uh, throw out any questions you guys got right now. Um, Coach Smoot will be here shortly, and it will be a fun uh, afternoon into the evening. We got our evening session tonight, as you can see on the schedule. Um, and as I'm sitting here, too, man, let me make sure I give a shout out to our sponsors, right? You got residents in Ocean C City, Maryland. I uh, use that promo LPR. 20% off. It looks really pretty. I when I every time I saw it and saw the pictures, it looked gorgeous. You got rogueshop.com. Uh promo code Bama, right? Uh legal C B D and more, which is awesome. I don't know if you guys ever use that stuff, but you know, I know Kyle said it, he likes it for his back. You know, that's a good, that's that's works. Man, I had to have like foot surgery and I used uh C B D and it was phenomenal. It, it helped me a lot. Like I loved it. And then you got uh Demetrius Maynard and Maynard Group. I uh, really appreciate you. Uh, and again, goal is 500 thumbs up. Make sure you run those up. I uh, love it. And make sure, you know, you jump on. If you don't have a Twitter, you know, think about making one too. I, I didn't have one before this. I didn't do any social media. <laughs> Super funny because now, now I'm on this Twitter thing, right? It's, it's crazy, man. But you get on there. Think about making one because you do see a lot of cool stuff. Like you get a lot of information and a lot of news. You don't necessarily need to get on there and post a whole bunch of stuff, but you get to see news. If you're on Twitter, make sure you follow me at coach underscore J and then all capitals, right? So I'm excited for, for spring and to see, again, who was able to take in this week, right? Who was able to take in this week and really understand. Um, and we got a super chat. What's up, man? Let's go. Lynn, what's up? Merrill this week is who picks up the playbook. How many great players you played with who could not get on the field because they just could not pick up the schemes. I played with the best players who could not play. Man, appreciate your super chat land with that $20, 100%, man. Um, I'll tell you, like, that is a really important aspect. A lot of guys do not give the credit for like how important football IQ is, okay? And not only is it important to pick up the playbook but understand the concept like i cannot stress enough for guys right i have seen dudes who are absolute beasts animals around the field who would, i know would just continue to excel as they continue to go through their career but they get they get delayed and maybe not understanding concepts so how how do we help these guys get concepts you got to give a lot of shout out, right? Um, again, Lynn, thank you for the super chat. 100% now. Um, you got to give a shout out, right, to the players right now at Alabama. Uh, and what these upperclassmen are doing for the youth. That does not happen everywhere. I'll tell you guys right now. Okay, like that does not happen to every program. I mean, wasn't there a video that just came out of like dudes fighting, fist fighting in the locker room? Man, like... That, that you don't need to fight in the locker room do that on the field you want to fight go knock each other out once or twice on the field or try to and then let it go but to take that in the locker room man it's ridiculous what you guys see that video that was insane you know it it's huge though from a standpoint of understanding guys who you know everybody is talented especially when you get up to like uh division one um you get into like power five man um and then I, I see, I see you, I see you, Jared. I'm going to put that up here in just a, a second. But you get into like power five conferences. Everybody's talented. Everybody's good. Everybody's fast. Everybody's strong. Yeah. You have a few guys like, I'll tell you right now, like uh, I can look back and I could look at Donald Butler. Uh, when Donald came in, man, Donald was like a freak of nature. Like he was, he, he was like some dude nobody knew about. For those who don't know, Donald 
uh, started for San Diego Chargers back in the day, middle linebacker. But Donald was a freak of nature. You do have guys like that. But uh, and they, I'll tell you, though, is – most guys, though, like the, the playing field is pretty much even. Like you can get out there and play, but you really separate yourself with that IQ, right? That IQ is huge, that football IQ. So picking up that playbook and we're, we're going to see who's able to do that very quickly uh, and, and maybe who needs more time, uh, especially this week going into uh, next week. So and then Jared just threw this out here, man. Jake Clemson making moves to leave the ACC. Article just came out, as I mentioned above. Clemson suing ACC, exploring leaving the conference. I mean, honestly, with what just got released as far as, like, who's making money, where. Like, I'd be surprised if some of these guys are, like, Florida State or uh, or Clemson try to go, like, independent, man. You know what I mean? Just from the standpoint, like, look what Notre Dame was able to achieve by themselves. Um, they, they're one of the highest paid singular teams right so kind of wild man like I, all that stuff going on is nuts and i don't blame them they, they want to be competitive they want to make that money um and yeah dwight what's up man uh yep yep man what's going on dude i did i did i didn't make that move to florida uh everybody <laughs> and then i'm coming to a day for sure for sure because that's a short drive it's going to be fun i'm excited to see you guys it's going to be a good time i uh, should be up there for the coaching clinic too here in the next few weeks i think that's the fifth and the sixth so i'm going to get out there and, and see some guys and uh have a good time man i'm excited for that like it's going to be exciting to hear like from some coaches and not just from alabama standpoint but uh different coaches who come you know uh to hear what they have to do and, and say you know like for me that's always been uh uh, I, I love coaching. Uh, I had to step out for a little bit, but yeah, <laughs> somebody said, Hey, Jarvis is like, good evening chat. And then moon rock is like, Eve, where are you at Jarvis? <laughs> you on the other side of the world. That's funny, man. But, uh, but yeah, so we'll see, man. Like, um, that for me, that's always been a big goal of mine is to jump back into coaching. You know, I stepped out of coaching for a while and, uh, and from there, man is, I did some other things from his business development and whatnot and, uh, and did some other cool stuff. But after that, now I'm kind of got at that point where I'm like, man, I, I miss it. I miss uh, impacting the kids. I miss impacting the youth and kind of see where it goes, man. Jump back, maybe uh, hopefully get back to that college game too. That would be where, where it's at or even in recruiting. So we'll see, man. We, we'll see where it goes. I'd love to do recruiting personnel. Who knows? Uh, what part of Florida down in Tampa, man? Tampa. Key West is beautiful though. Love it, man. Love Q Key West is cool. Um, yeah, T Tampa, man. Like Tampa's that area right now. It's like money down here and all over the place. Crazy. Crazy. Um, but yeah, I got family down here. So that's a big reason why. But uh, yeah, I love it. Jarvis in the UK. <laughs> Coach Smook, everybody. What's good? What's Smook. good, bro? What's up, Can man? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, man. Look, mm. sipping on it. Hey, you ever had the Gatorade Twitch? Uh, no, I've never tried that, man. Man, never they're good. That. They're good. You know, you know what? You, you know what I do? My my like workout stuff, man. Is uh, is I like bucked up, bucked. Is that pre workout? Be, 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 be bucked up, mm -hmm. and that that brand is nice, nice, man. You ready? That's on how you. That's on how you like full of nitrous, man. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I, your pump be that gym, I feel crazy. good again. Boy, I love it. I love it. Fucked up. You know? I did, man, I was dry scooping it at one point. Dude, I, it'd be careful of that stuff, man. There's some crazy stuff that happens out there, man. Crazy Listen. stuff. Listen, I go half a scoop. Uh -huh. Like, especially if I don't, especially if I ate before I came to the gym. If I ate too mm -hmm. much, I just dry scoop it, man. Because yeah. it take longer to get, you know, with when your body's full, take longer to get distributed through the right that's everything right. in all the different spots so mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah man i uh i heard you in here talking about uh the uh how it's time to lock it in man and uh mm -hmm. i think people mm -hmm. are really starting to realize what this team is doing man i think really yeah. it's, it's, it's being put on notice and i think guys are becoming comfortable being the underdog right being counted out right now Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's one of them things. It's infectious, man. You see guys react to negative criticism, right? And yeah. um, they don't they don't tuck tail and run. They when they meet it head on, you know, yep. with hard work. And yep. 
like I, I'm gonna show you better than I could tell you. You know, attitude. Mm -hmm. That's that's a scary team to deal with. It, it, that is, you are spot on, man. Like that mentality. You know, it's, it like goes back into you know we, we talk about like the military. We go talk about like tactical training, but um, but it, it goes back to like that mentality. It's like be hard to kill mentality. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like be a beast. Like you don't just be that guy who goes out there and puts that work in. Like th those guys are those guys are scary because guess what? They now have a mentality where they don't hear all the all the shit talk anymore. Right. But what they what they're thinking is is pretty they are like locked in and that's yeah. what we're gonna see is spring going into fall you know yeah i'm telling you man and and schematic wise that's why i'm excited to, uh you know get the post practice reports and stuff in mm -hmm. um to start seeing we don't have media coverage today um but tomorrow we do have pro day right and then yeah. thursday will be a little bit more access i think it'll be a lot more um access thursday but we will have some type of media pushed out uh today so it'll be good to react to that get some feedback you know we got people yeah. that's connected that's that's there on on mm -hmm. the ground so it's good to, to have that that type of uh energy back man I'm, I'm just excited man i'm calm today because i'm ready to see what some of these i got some got some good text messages yesterday and the day before Woo. in regards to some recruits so yeah yeah man yeah man i'm excited to hear man i mean you know as you guys know like smook is smook's the man he's he's awesome when it comes to this stuff obviously if you guys follow him and all the different things he does like but smook always bringing bringing that heat and and he you know he's a great overall as a dude as you guys have all got to see on this channel and through his uh social media is is phenomenal at just connecting with people right and, and building those relationships and that's what it should be all about in the end of the day is yeah is making sure that people are building people up and, and bringing everybody that's, together that's what we're winning at over here on Bama mm -hmm. football on youtube we're building relationships wow. whether it's with our fan base you know our supporters um mm -hmm. with the players that we're coming across the coaches that we've been interviewing it's, it's all yeah. about building relationships even with other uh podcasts and you know networks channels that do mm -hmm. Bama coverage you know building relationships yeah, establishing boundaries right mm -hmm. um respecting what people do uh being honest you know whether it's is disagreeing or agreeing being honest yeah, and respecting and respecting opinions you know that's right and a lot of people a lot of people have a hard time doing that which which is crazy to me to know that it's it's amongst the, the industry but you know it wouldn't be america it wouldn't be you know society mm -hmm. without some type of discourse so uh, mm -hmm. our focus here is just to continue to push forward man and continue to provide yeah. authenticity you know and right, that's what we're gonna do what up jared what up everybody y'all know man what so is yeah there's a lot in here man a lot in here to act up. Awesome. right it is a lot in here we need to get them likes up man we uh we got 186 watching we got 154 likes man y'all make sure y'all run the likes up man make sure y'all run the likes up while i sip on this what? twitch is my brother antoine in here antoine please check in before i do this Cause you missed the last two. I'm gonna wait for Antoine to check in, then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do what I gotta do. But yeah, yeah, man, we got some hot stuff going on with recruiting, bro. Like for real. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's that's kind of been my focus when there's like, mm -hmm. you know, there's no football react to react to on campus um, or anything happening. Like I just been in the recruiting in the trenches, falling, you know. This checking the film out checking the highlight films you know mm -hmm. connecting with different coaching staffs like yeah we really about the, the state of alabama is so full of talent man we'll be talking about mm -hmm. on one of my segments we'll be talking about the running backs in state we started to mm -hmm. last week but we got caught yeah. up on some of those other guys that we were looking at their film and they highlights so yeah yeah man yeah. i love it dude and i mean well that's one thing dude like you you are you are just absolutely killing it it's fun like i hope you guys all enjoy it too chat and undefeated like the the stuff that's brought to the table on these recruits like these guys are these guys are awesome like i talked about a little bit in it and i know brian you asked should it be a recruiting addition or addiction i want to be honest i think it's going to be both you know what i'm saying because i think addition is maybe coming soon another addition but it's a definitely mm. an addiction for sure mm. because we all follow it all all year 365 24 7 right and so uh a lot of fun though man but smook i'll let you do your thing dude hey everybody oh man 
Hey, listen, listen, bro. Um, yo, yo. That recruiting thing is about to get real, man. It's about to I get real. It. It's about to get real. I'm telling you, we about to be so. Uh, just keep watching, everybody. Just keep stay, watching. Stay, stay on the tracks. We're we're on the tracks <laughs> and we're moving, baby. We're moving. Yep. Eyes wide open. That's for all. So. <laughs> Woo! All right. So, hey, everybody, but Roll Tide, and I, I had a lot of fun with you guys today. Uh, I'll see you this evening when we jump back on. Have fun with my boy, Coach Smoot. Uh, it's going to be a fun day. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Yay! Mm-hmm. All right. Well, hey, Smoot, love you, man, and uh, Roll Tide, everybody. All right, brother. Roll Tide, man. Peace. Listen, 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 Linda, listen. Y'all, we got some vibes today. <laughs> Y'all, and then also, don't be talking about being me being stuffy today, please, because I really just, I ain't learned my lesson. I went for another run this morning, and I ain't wrap up good, so, you know, it, it's just that infantry. I got to get rid of that infantry mindset. I don't be thinking about weather, and then I just be ready to ride. What's up, everybody? Jumping in the chat, man. Much love. Let me see if I can pull y'all up on the big screen real quick. I don't know what it is. StreamYard's not acting right on my uh my PC anymore. That's why on the other camera it keeps timing out or whatever. Don't know what it is, but I like having y'all up here on the big screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. uh okay what's good everybody yeah 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 yeah. i see y'all trying to get trying to jump ahead asking about who gonna commit listen listen i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know who's gonna commit y'all know i never know i i just i just i just never know you know i don't know nobody ever listens to me anyways you know yeah I hey, appreciate y'all for showing up this morning, y'all. Jared in the chat. Let's go. Dwight, Brian, everybody in the chat showing up. We got uh, Cynthia in the chat. We got Jeremy. We got Anthony. Let's go. Anthony said, great show, fellas. I hey, appreciate that, Ant. We got uh, Shane. We got my guy, Moon Rocker. What's up, Moon Rocker? D'Angelo. Who we see you? Tim Nolan in the chat. Let's go. Rocket Town. Let's go. Yeah, Maddie P. What's good? What's good, Ruben? What's good? from Dalton. Hey, East Alabama, stand up. Hey, Dalton, like, South, though? Don't we consider Dalton, like, well, not really, because it ain't as far as Mobile. So, yeah, you right. East Alabama. Kind of like, you know, we get, you get Phoenix City, we get East Alabama, but we also Central, right? Nah, that's Montgomery and them. They Central. We get East, though. What's good, though? Rocket Town, everybody. James Cloud in the chat. Ty said, what's up? I'm chilling, man. Javion. Javion, you've been chilling on uh, Twitter. I appreciate that, man. Javion was tagging me in everybody's stuff. I was like, man, I don't rock with them. Stop tagging me in their stuff. Nah, he was just trying to, he was, he was trying to get us to jump on folks inaccurate reports. And we ain't we ain't in that. We ain't in that business these days, man. Maddie P said, apologize for my absence over the past five to six days, but I've been battling uh MS Flare up. Oh man, praying for you, bro. Hope everything gets better for you, man. You've been missed though. Appreciate you for pulling up today. Larry Large, man. We got your reality to reach coming up later. Let me get my uh the right segment up here. Get the right graphic, y'all. I got the mirror report still up there. Still got the mirror report. There it is. We in uh got the smook scoop graphic up. How's everybody feeling today, though, man? We feeling good? We feeling fine? Today's Tuesday. Man, let me tell you, I had a lot of conversations last night. What's up, Jamie Malone in the chat? Yes. You need my advice, Metho? What you mean? At Ole Miss, now he wants to be back at Alabama. He's a four-star DB from Tuscaloosa. What do you mean? What What? What? my advice? I don't know what to do, man. I don't know. No not ex- What's his name? We'll look at his film. Send me, email me, email me, man. We'll look at his film. We'll see what he what he can do, man. We'll see what he's talking about. You send me the email at the uh, coachsmook at gmail.com. We'll check it out, man. We'll check it out. We'll check it out. We'll see what he's talking about. And he wants to be at Bama. 
Don't come in here dropping stuff like that. You gotta you gotta put names on stuff like that. But yeah, everybody, what's up, Rodney? How everybody doing? Cody, Joey in the chat. Let's go. Everybody pulling up. Cynthia, you was bringing the B to the A last night. Hey, let me let me tell you. Let me tell you, Cynthia. Sometimes you just gotta you gotta pull that uh you gotta pull that belt out sometimes, and and you gotta handle your business. Uh, hold on, y'all. Let me handle this real quick, and then we are gonna jump right into the segments. Before we jump into the segments, as a matter of fact, let's give our uh, let's get in here and pay some bills, y'all. Got to definitely show some love to our sponsors. Here we go, Kyle. Take it away. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code LPR for special BAMO football pricing up to 20% off. Also, go to the rogueshop.com. Use the promo code BAMO. You get legal CBD. For me, personally, I like the topical oil. You know how intense my workouts are, right? So I like the topical oil. I like to rub that on my back, whatever, after those cinder blocks. So go to their website, cruise down, look through their website, and uh, definitely check out rogueshop.com. And like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is BAMA. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 cents a day how do you do this make sure you're logged into your account this is on a computer you can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership once you click membership you can see different options you can see an upgrade button right there to the right if you want to go through the different levels we have fan funder videos from the staff right here at bamboo football on youtube very easy to navigate let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama football on youtube and of course if you want to rock that undefeated gear Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Yes, sir. Y'all know how we do, man. Appreciate every fan funder, every supporter, every sponsor. We appreciate y'all, man. We really do. Today, we are on the Smooth Scoop. We come in with a little bit of chill energy. Um, I don't feel like we're going to have a lot of trolls in here today, so we should have a good vibe. We should have a good vibe. How y'all feeling today? All 212 of you in the chat. Thank you for being here, kicking it with your boy, Coach Smooth. And listen, listen, there is no reason to hold back today. Any questions, anything you think I might know about or whatever, ask me, you know. But we're going to flow through these topics today. We got an hour and a half segment, so we're going to take our time, kind of like we did last week. And we're going to be able to look at a lot of highlights again today. We got a lot of positive reviews last week on the highlight segment, looking at a lot of these players that's either Alabama is targeting or guys that just have been, you know, that have caught my eye through, you know, my extensive search of talent in state, out of state. It doesn't matter. Any type of film I can get my hands on, I'm going to watch it. Love watching these young men develop um, into what they're becoming as far as these college athletes, these talents that are being recruited. So definitely trying to uh, shape my game up for that but also to bring it to you all. So let's jump into it today. The midday roundup, let's jump into it. Listen, what stood out today between Kyle's segment and between uh, Jake Merrill's segment that, that you kind of want to get a perspective on? Because Kyle brought up, you know, with the phone calls, there was a lot of hot takes with um, the way the season is shaping out, the the contracts, the coaching contracts, how those things are, um, how those that news came out yesterday. We all kind of reacted to it yesterday. Um, but what is something that y'all want to hear my take on? Like, uh, like we, me and Jake were just talking about how these guys are preparing and putting in the extra work. And uh, we've seen that in the past. You know, we've seen that in the past. But to see it continue to maintain to that, you know, that that just speaks on the culture at Alabama. Um, a guy like Kaylin, Kaylin DeBoer comes in and it's not second nature. I mean, it's not it's not foreign to him. It's, it's second nature to encourage that and to appreciate that about players that's on his team. So. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Uh, our new member, Walt Albright. Hey, welcome to the team, fam. Welcome back to the team. Appreciate you for joining the team, becoming a fan funder, man. We appreciate you greatly. You already know, man. There's the, Hey, if, if anybody going to tell you thank you, it's going to be Bama Football on YouTube and the panel. We appreciate everybody that joins the fan funders and supports the team, man. Welcome back. Hey, enjoy it, man. Run them emojis up whenever you can. <laughs> Love to see it, man. Love to see it. All right, so let me see. Uh, 
what we had i had a comment that i highlighted we said uh coach listening to you and jake talk about the underdog mentality brought a realization the fusion of energy i thought was going to unleash the beast with the grass tonnage of talent we have listen la something that i think alabama is uh privy to that most teams aren't and then i think college football and the rest of the college football is starting to realize is that alabama has never really been like we never really fell off you you can't find find me a class that's that's ranked outside of the top five top ten right where where you look at what's left on this roster you're you're just loaded with talent we're still deep in talent like you have ohio state they have a very talented roster but they're one deep at that at the at, at major positions and then you go look at lsu you go look at georgia like a lot of these teams are not as deep as alabama is with quality depth if, as far as coming out of high school rated talent right i mean we got a lot of fifth year guys on the team you know a few fifth year guys on the team that were highly rated in their class and they're late bloomers and so now they they get to come out they they're the fifth year guys you could tell teams that have fifth year guys with some talent right michigan benefited from it last year having a lot of veteran guys with talent that really they went through that growing pains early playing behind other guys going through those different phases showing flashes and now they became to a stage where they're consistent so that's what we we, we have a, a opportunity to see from alabama you got guys like tim smith that's there you got guys like uh damon Payne. you know he's a, i think damon Payne's a fourth year guy maybe is it is damon Payne a red shirt junior I think this I, I mean those guys are up front they have an opportunity to be in a rotational front that's going to allow them to attack and be what they what put them on the map coming out of high school you just see a lot of these guys just you know dominating in gap scheme in high school because very rarely do you see high schools playing a lot of gap scheme up front you look at linebackers I look at Deontay Lawson and Jahad Campbell possibly having the best years of their career you know Jahad Campbell is going to the NFL after this year He's eligible. Deontay Lawson is going to be one of the highest graded. Justin Jefferson is going to be a guy. He might go second or third round, but he's going to be a steal. You know, uh, I mean, this defense is just going to be so uh, electric. It's going to be exciting to watch. And the, but it all starts with the mentality of the locker room and the coaches. Actually, they 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 uh they promote that mentality with their demeanor and their character. So I'm excited to see it. Mm -mm. is this the second transfer cycle you can't transfer in a conference without having to sit out a year i think you can't transfer in a conference at all right now todd i'm and I, I would like for if anybody in the undefeated can look that up for me we could discuss that throughout the segment sometime throughout the segment definitely pull that up for you boy appreciate nicole for being in the chat what's going on? what's going on fam uh chris waltman what's good smooth love the content every day from panama city hey appreciate that panama city Man, I got some Panama City stories, but we're not gonna get into it. We're not gonna get into it, man. Uh Rodney Tuberville says, What's my take on QB Juju Lewis? He's currently committed to USC, but I seen that Alabama has a chance to flip him. All right, Rodney. I don't know if you saw that from here, but we were just talking about this the other day, and it kind of gives us an opportunity to segue into who's talking now. And that's the first name I was gonna bring up: quarterback Juju Lewis. He's talking now. Um, Juju Lewis has a long time relationship with the University of Alabama, dating back to when Tua was here. Very, he, I mean, huge fan of Tua Tonga Valoa, right? Uh, really, really was one of those guys that, um, you know, kind of modeled his style of play after Tua. That quick release, that extending the playability, that, uh, that gunslinger mentality. Juju Lewis displays a lot of those characteristics, right? And talking to this staff and and you know people around Juju Lewis's camp, the USC flip can, is 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 realistic. Like his interest level in the Crimson Tide has grown a lot. I mean, to the point where he's uh he's he's really he he is banking on you know establishing these relationships. He feels like he has a realistic chance to come in and be the next great if he was to sign. And Kalen DeBoer and his staff were to stick around for him to develop him. And that's a big thing right now with Juju. He wants to be there where his staff is that's going to be around. You know, and with the way that college football is, nobody can guarantee that. So you're, you're fighting that battle. But I think we're making great ground. 
this this staff is building some some serious relationships you know we don't want to look too far ahead but say for instance coach Kalen DeBoer in the next four years wins three national titles two national titles in the next four years his chances of going to the NFL or going getting you know th those are realistic right those are serious and he'll be halfway through this eight-year contract right or is it 10-year it was a 10-year contract I gotta go pull the uh, graphic again let me see if I got the graphic in the back but it's realistic so so having a relationship for juju to have a relationship with uh jamarcus shepherd or nick sheridan that's important and those are two key guys in his recruitment it's not just kaylin the like this staff is spread out as far as as far as how they're reaching these players and juju is one of those guys it's another young man that uh has came up on the radar and um i'm excited because he's actually going to be on the show tonight luke metz when we look at his film tonight, you guys are going to see exactly why I'm excited about him. But um, this young man, if we can gain a commitment from Luke Metz, which I, which I believe we we have, I believe we have really pushed into building relationships is important with a lot of these recruits, right? And this class of 25, there's so much talent. Alabama can go and get, you know, 15 five stars right now, and it'll still be a lot of quality talent out there in the class of 25 right now that's how that's how good the class of 25 is so it's not about getting to a certain one first because right now it with this class you can miss on one and gain another but there are very few that you don't want to miss on luke mess is one of them turbo rogers is one of them uh who else i mean getting antonio coleman to flip was one of them you know and then think about it ryan williams was in this class of wide receivers where you know you just got a plethora of wide receivers Derek smith right zamir zamir come on man come on man i mean i the the names is you just nation montgomery who's on the list quanell uh quanell faircon i mean all of these these guys are just just loving what they're hearing what they're getting their interactions at alabama travis smith jr very calm about his his movement how he's showing he's he's keeping it equal amongst uh, social media but i'm telling you there was a connection when he came to Alabama. I like our chances with, with a lot of these guys. And a lot of people be like, man, there's no way you load a class up like that and then keep them all. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Kalen DeBoer is a mastermind at, at getting people to buy into uh, development, divide, buying into process, same way Coach Saban was. A lot of these guys want to be able to come to school and play two solid years and be higher you know, draft picks. And, and when you buy into a process, two, three years of your life where you're just really just perfecting your craft in a system that produces success, man, it's hard to it's hard to pass up on it. It's hard to pass up on it. And that's what a lot of these kids are starting to believe. And they're they're being taught, they're being preached. That's that that is being preached to them, and they're believing it. What's up, William Chun? How you feeling? Eight year contract. Yeah, so four years. Yeah, man. Four years, it'll be I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be uh I wouldn't be surprised if Kalen DeBoer takes a leap in four years to go be a, a head coach in the NFL. I don't think, especially if, if NIL and pay to play continues like it is, man, we'll see a lot of coaching changes in three to four years. Be another whirlwind. Need to find a jeweler to make that happen. Great work. Hey, Skylar Cook, facts. Me and uh me and Coach Sean was talking about it. And it ain't even got to be like a real chain. Y'all, y'all find out where we can get the B2A chain made. I want one of them big old ones so we could walk around a day with that mug and handing it over. You know what I'm saying? I slick. I, I think uh I think we got some great ideas set up for a day for our section. I think we're gonna do like some some on stream live debates, right? With with their fans, you know, the doubters, the Miro doubters, all of that stuff. Like on screen live debates, controlled debates. I think that's gonna be cool. We're gonna be able to, you know, we're gonna do some some cool stuff, y'all. Uh, uh, Joey said, you ever look at Josiah uh, Smart? He's the number one. Um, if you didn't send it to my email, I never looked at it. I'm sorry. <laughs> if he stays eight years, he gets three natties. Chris, if, if, if Caitlin DeBoer stays eight years, he might get five natties. The way he's recruiting and affected, man, it's going to be a lot of, within the first four years of his tenure at Alabama, especially this year. Don't let Kalen DeBoer go 12 and 0 in the regular season. You, you're going to see so many college moves, like flip coach changes, 
in college football over the next two years if Kalen DeBoer comes into this year and goes 12 and 0. Realistically, if we drop one, it's going to be an away game. It's going to be one that you you don't expect. We're never going to expect a loss, right? But you can see why it will happen. New team, a new philosophies, hiccups here and there. But if it's one that I'm worried about, and I've been telling y'all this, it's at Tennessee. They bring back a, a, a nice style of defense. They bring back a, 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 a lot of talent on the offensive side that needs to be developed. But sure enough, it's talent. I can see us struggling at, at LSU, even with their, their questions on the defensive side. By the time of the year, guys have figured out, teams have figured out who they are, right? So those, those games, our schedule to me is favorable to have a 10 and 2, 11 and 1, or 12 and 0 type season. We're going to win 10 games minimum, right? But my thing is, how does our team handle those losses after those losses? Do we turn around and we demolish the next two or three teams? And then we hit an. I think we've done enough of that last year. And that's a lot of core group guys that are back that you can look at this team and say, okay, boom, this is adversity. This is how we should expect to handle it. And we're better equipped this year with the style of play that we're going to be presenting on the field. So I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about Kalen DeBoer's sex during his, uh, success during his time here. Are we hearing anything about Jamie French coming back? Nope. Don't want to either, Josh. Name chasing. Look at quality. It's seven. It's seven or eight receivers that that can give you the same type of production as Jamie French in this twenty five class. Trust me. Smook with the transfer portal and pay for play. Who's to say we keep all these great players from year to year? Hey, that's why you got to overload. That's why you never stop recruiting. Coach Saban had that philosophy even before NIL. You don't go. You don't stop recruiting other five stars because one five star commits. You find out who really wants to come and compete. That's why I'm so happy about Duke Johnson. I think he's a, a solid, a solid Bama commit. He's one of those guys. If you see me and him interacting on social media, I I, 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 I like to hype him up because I see the dog in him. I, I hate it for whoever thinks they're going to keep Duke Johnson off the field. Whoever thinks they're going to keep Sterling Dixon off the field, QB Reese. Like, yeah, they might, they might accept the fact that they're not going to see the field their first year. But I'm telling you, they understand. They understand process. These boys are committed. And in this, and I mean, this is these are two coaching staffs that understand the the quality of depth, the quality of depth. Right? You can't go four or five deep at every position, but there are a lot of spots on this in this defensive scheme where you want to be able to go four or five deep as far as your rotation. Kane Womack understands that, so don't be surprised if numbers aren't as high. Single numbers aren't, aren't you you won't have one guy with 120 something tackles, but you go you're gonna have seven or eight guys with 60 tackles, right? Because of the depth and the rotation and the talent that's being able to develop with games, game reps, all of that is gonna matter. You're gonna see that early in this tenure of, of Kalen DeBoer. Watch. And, and and to answer the question of who's talking now, not many people are talking. Not, not 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 many people are talking about the people that are talking about Alabama that created all these crazy narratives. You saw, man, Coach Gillespie to, to Ohio State as a as the same to take a demotion. He's not he's a head, he's an assistant head coach right now. And the running backs coach, the the highest paid in, in the league right now. Right? Why would he leave and go to Ohio State? Coach Roach. Uh oh. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all know when that phone get the buzz, and I gotta check that thing, cause uh, you know, we got people trying to commit. People on the fence about committing early, changing their commitment dates, right? Like we really <laughs> let me plug my phone up. We really plugged in, y'all. So there's there's one recruit right now that's set to recruit uh to commit in July. And he's possibly thinking about committing before the week is out. That's that's how crazy this staff is going on recruiting. Like kids are ready to just say, look, man, let me commit because I don't want to I don't want to risk missing out on that. That it's only like 27. I think we got 27 in this class. That we're able to to 
to sign, right? I'm telling you. I'm telling y'all. Jerry, what you got, people? If you have iPhone, go settings, general keyboard, text. Oh, so that so that they could uh spell my name right. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. David Sanders is one I'm really. Hey Josh, what if I told you? And, and I'm gonna try something. With, I'm gonna try something with the chat because people have been like really coming for Bama football on YouTube. I'm gonna try something with with our with our undefeated, right? Even if you aren't a member. What if I told you that Coach Smook knows of a secret society, right? And they're in this secret society. There's a there's a powerful group of young men who who really want to build a secret superpower, right? And some of the names that we've been questioning. What if Coach Smook told you that he got he got a, a glimpse of some of those names, and, and if he told you don't worry about it, how many of y'all would start believing Coach Smook? Put some Coach Smook emojis in the chat. As a matter of fact, put the the Bama football on YouTube emojis in the chat. Not the Illuminati, Dino. We don't do that. We don't do the Illuminati. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Jake, tell him, Jake. <laughs> Jake, tell him. We like God has really placed Bama football on YouTube in a different spot, man. And a lot of a lot of these names that people just be saying crazy stuff about when it comes to Bama. I wish I wish I could just be like, boom, and just boom, 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 just shoot it down because they they would be it would be a lot of but it's not it's not the time right it's not the place and it when the time comes it that's when it's gonna happen. I, I that, I'm telling you, but just know um, that name you just mentioned. We want them. We want them. We want them. And guess what? They want to be here. Coach, 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 uh, Coach Jake, Ty Hayes. Uh, I mean, even I, I'm, I'm not going to take as much credit for it, but those two, because of the way that they study how this game of college football has been, right? They study it on a different level from a different aspect than what me and Coach Son generally do, right? And they bring a different perspective that causes me to think, you know, and I, I look at it and I start tying different roots and connections together. And you look at what Kalen DeBoer was able to do in the Northwest, right? And the, and the Southwest. You, you look at what he was introduced to in the Midwest up North, right? So, and he comes to the South with all those different cultural differences and he's accepted in the South and somebody tried to lie to us and say that he was going to, he's going to struggle with recruiting if y'all could meet courtney morgan or even be in a conversation around courtney morgan y'all will understand why these recruits <laughs> are so adept and and they'd be happy to talk to him and mind you there are other people who are like courtney morgan but he is graced to do what he do and he's doing a great job alabama really did their research when they went and went all in on kaylin DeBoer and kaylin DeBoer and everything that came with him they really did their research. Our research team, who had been looking for uh, coaching prospects for the past year and a half, they did their research. We invested in the right spots. And that's why no matter which way NIL and pay to play goes, no matter which way it goes, Alabama is never going to fall off. And college football is starting to hear that. They're starting to see that. I'm telling you. Ricky, you know what? The four stars that we're getting committed right now, I guarantee you, Duke Johnson. If Duke Johnson is, and Jake, you're in the chat. If Duke Johnson doesn't get his fifth star by the end of this recruiting cycle, or when these ratings, these final ratings come out, I'm going to have a fit. Luke Metz, inside linebacker, edge, whatever you want to play a at, strong safety. This, If he don't have a fifth star, he could honestly go in as an athlete too. Him and Duke Johnson, they both could be athletes. It's a uh, it's a cornerback. I was just looking at his uh his film yesterday. Uh, not Dijon Lee. We talked about Dijon last week. What's the young man's name? He just got offered by Alabama. I was looking at his film yesterday. Oh man, somebody just tagged me in it too. Let me go to Brody's page real quick, y'all. 
Brody always keep me on point. Cornerback. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Dang, who's the corner? He just got offered. Dang, I can't I can't find it. It'll come to me before the end of the segment. Guarantee it. It'll come to me. Dang, I can't think of it. Y'all start throwing names out there. I can't wait to see this young man play. Nothing but exciting news for us, guys. Listen, Duke Johnson, um, Duke Johnson, I like, uh, what's the kid's name out of uh, Kansas? Lincoln Cure, the, the tight end. I like that young man. Uh, Quanell, uh Faircon, like his, like our chances with him. Nation Montgomery, I like our chances with him. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting for us to offer the young man Aiden Kane, this defensive lineman for the 2026 class. I'm waiting, man. I'm telling you, man. And, and and it's it's one of those things where you're looking at a Kyle and Deer. That's who I'm thinking about. A Kyle and Deer, the running back that that's going to be on campus Thursday. He's actually going to be on the show tonight. I don't know why I lost his name. I'm thinking about DBs, but I'm thinking about the running back. You you look at those type of recruits that are four stars. Man, go turn the film on. Y'all seen 45 seconds of his film. I cheated. I ain't gonna lie. I watched the rest because I'm gonna have him on with me. So instead of reacting, we get to let him explain to us what he's seeing. So it's gonna be fun having him on tonight. But uh, yeah, man, it's a guy named T Tijon something. Man, I gotta find these kids, bro. I gotta organize my stuff better. I just got my little room set up too, y'all. I got my room set up all the way. So um, I'm gonna set my board up and I got some names I'm gonna start bringing up. Uh, over the next few weeks uh, that I want y'all to start looking at. It might have been Brett Greenberg that posted it, Jake Merrill. If you're trying to look for it, uh, Jake, I think it might have been Brett Greenberg that had uh, had posted it. Yeah. I think it was Brett Greenberg. Let me let me check. I'm I'm I gotta find it because it was a corner that I wanted to. Oh man, that makes me feel bad too because I be watching so y'all gotta understand. I be up at two o'clock in the morning watching highlight film, trying to track these dudes down, and sometimes I just <laughs> I just forget. Yeah. uh ruben oh i get it but hey as human beings we have short attention span especially when it comes to talent facts Corey lewis i uh coach Mook, i have to be honest with you want want you want my dbs and corners from florida that's just me listen florida always produced like speed and talent at wide receiver and in the secondary that's that's not a that's not a uh slight or anything like we know that but alabama the state of alabama check out some of the talent that's coming out of the state of in state of alabama and i ain't, I'm, and i'm not being partial i'm i'm more so like surprised at the quality of talent coming out of the state of alabama because traditionally you usually came to alabama you got your your linebackers you know you got a, a lot of linebackers you had a lot of power backs you know um you didn't have many quarterbacks you didn't have many wide receivers right you had old linemen you know you had a lot of that hardcore in the trenches old school style ball but now with the advancements in a lot of these player development coaches that have their gyms, you see some nuances of the game being brought into the Southeast. Alabama's just now catching up. And you're seeing these young men in this in state, they're developing at the same rate as some of the guys in Texas, California, what we've seen in Florida. You get what I'm saying? So that's all I'm saying to state and, and Georgia. Georgia has always been full of talent too. They're they're starting to implement some of the same things. And you see their quality of talent, what they've been able to. I mean, Caleb Downs came out of the state of Georgia. He was the number one player in that class last year. Travis Hunter, the year before that. You get what I'm saying? So, like, you, you just, you're looking at the, the quality of players coming out of state, and Alabama's starting to catch up. Alabama's starting to catch up. 
And I like highlighting that, you know, I'm from the state of Alabama. Anthony Rogers, facts. I mean, so many, so many. Miles Johnson, he in the state, right? Come on, man. And it's been a lot. It's been a lot. It's been a lot. That's what I'm saying. So like, I, I like what we, Drake Kirkpatrick Jr. The only reason he's a three star is because he, he didn't camp a lot out of the state of Alabama and the Alabama legacy. So it just goes to show you, just goes to show you that state of Alabama is, is starting to come up. Tariq, that's the one I was talking about. I did not know he had any type of interest in Alabama. I did not know. And he's a safety, right? He's a safety. Hey, Ricky, we ain't talking about Alvin, man. He, he, he signed with the enemy, man. He, he, he siding with the enemy. I think Alvin Henderson is going to be one of those. Uh, I think he's going to be a, a, a armor guy. That's that's a young man got out of, out of Elba. A train, right? I think he's going to be. I think he's going to be an armor guy. QB Reese, another one in state. I mean, just so much talent, y'all. And all of these guys are four stars. Highly rated four stars. The three stars, you you look at the film and you're like, wow, how is, how is he a three star? You know. So yeah, we we in that state. But let's let's move over to our in state running backs, man. I want to get over here to uh, huddle. Um, let me see. I bookmarked this this uh, post here on Twitter because I wanted to get to some of these guys' profiles and kind of just you know look at look at the in state talent just. This is in state in Alabama, right? Look at some of these guys. Um, check out their film, man, and, and, and let y'all see what I'm talking about. This is just running backs. Uh, let me see. Bookmark, bookmark. How do I get to my bookmark stuff? Here we go. All right, this is the post I showed you all the other day. Um, this is the post I showed you all the other day when I was talking about um, those in-state running backs. And y'all know we look, we've we already looked at Alvin Henderson, right? Um, we looked at, uh, who else? We looked at uh, Terrence Gaines, right? Do y'all remember this one? Y'all want to, let's go back and check this one out. Uh oh, that ain't what I wanted to do. That ain't what I wanted to do. Let me pull his uh huddle up. And this young man, he's a. Uh... Hey, you know what? Um, Jake, I think this might be the film that I was. Yup, had the blue jerseys on. I'm gonna show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all. This is the one. That's the one we left off on. I, okay, now it's coming to me. Now it's coming to me. All right, I want y'all to check this young man's feeling out. Right, I want y'all to check this out because. Uh, it's funny. I, I we left off on this. I think we left off on this the other day, and I'm gonna pull it off to this uh, full screen over here so we can have it full screen there. Um, but I, I want y'all to. La I want to laugh because uh, we was about to look at this young man's film the other day, and uh, <laughs> I think we just kind of got over over our time. And uh, yeah, let's check it out, man. In state running backs, Alabama. This is Terrence Gaines Jr. I want y'all to check him out. Um, and we just gonna we just gonna react, man. And I just want I want y'all to see this real quick. Uh, I want y'all to see his running style. And 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 on on roster comparison or previous Bama comparison, look at him. Uh, get up field. And this is a uh this is his junior year. So he's coming into his uh senior year this year. At running back Terrence Gaines Jr. 
decisiveness, put his foot in the ground, get upfield. High knee, I mean, strong runner, strong runner, strong runner, always finishing forward. Get an, um, what's he called? Look at the execution by the old line, man. He got a solid old line. Look at Big Boy. Why you out there? T turn around and put your big body on somebody. I like this young man right here. Decisive runner. Decisive runner. Decisive runner. I like it. You can't go wrong with backs like this coming out of high school. They're the ones that are real easy to be coachable. You know, you see where he can have, you know, his upside as far as his athleticism, right? The vision is there. Very decisive. Doesn't look like he's the fastest, you know, but definitely very decisive. I like to see that. And this is just one game film, y'all. Let's go over here and see if we can find like his his most recent highlights. This young man. Hey, and then y'all know what else? Um is he the one that's uh I was I think he was getting looked at in basketball too. Somebody check that. Is Terrence Gaines look getting looked at in basketball also? Out of Morris, Alabama, man. Anybody know where where, where Morris at? I ain't never been to Morris. Anybody been to Morris? I never been to Morris. I'm trying to find this full uh highlight film real quick, chat. Cause that was just one game. The other day we had his actual highlight film up. That's what I'm trying to find. Here you go. Yep, this it right here. Found it. We got it. We in the game. Here it is. 2,000 all-purpose yards. 21. Huh. Tell y'all, decisive runners. They usually have the early success. Look at guys like... Um, Nick Chubb and uh, who just recently came through Georgia? The uh, Milton kid. Those guys were decisive runners in high school. And he not the biggest, man. He just runs so strong. Look how he put his foot in the ground. Ugh. No time wasted, man. No time wasted. Jam Miller, like. Honestly, the way he's how decisive he is with hitting the hole kind of looks like Richard Young's highlight film. Uh, look at him. He sees the hole. He does it. No hesitation, man. He trusts, he trusts his uh, ability, he trusts his power, right? Doesn't doesn't ease into the hole. He attacks it. Good pass blocking, pass pro. You like to see a young back step up in the in the in the hole and, and meet it with, with ferocity, with aggression. Decipher. Oh. Nice square block. Keep your head up. Stand square. Like it. Look at decisiveness, man. He's not trying to extend. He, man, he wants to get north and south. He's not trying to get extend to the sideline. Ooh, pick your hole. There you go. Can he pull away? Oh. That was a great effort by the defender. Can't even mad. Can't be mad at that. Look at him. Smart. Save for the next one. Don't give up a cheap hit. There you go. Strong, man. He's strong. He is strong. Decisive runner. Look at him. No hesitation. Balance. I like it. Terrence Gaines, you, you definitely moving up the charts. And he got hands out the backfield. Literally, that's Jam Miller's touchdown against Georgia. Did I not just say Jam Miller like? Look at the hands. Great pass. That's Jam Miller's touchdown against Georgia. Funny how I said that, and then you see a play like that. This is psh. he runs like Richard Young, though. I don't know if y'all remember Richard Young's film, but he runs like Rich. He runs like Rich, y'all. Y'all agree? You think Jam dances too much? No, man. John, I don't know. What, what Jam Miller you watch? I don't know. 
I don't know what Jan Miller you watch, John. Jan Miller ain't dance a lot for me. Open field putting a move on somebody one on one. I mean, we haven't seen a, we haven't seen enough opportunities from Jam. Jam is the one that sticks his foot in the ground and just hits it. Yeah, I don't know. I think you, I think you got the wrong Jam Miller. I don't know which Jam Miller you talking about. I like that young man there though, Terrence Gaines. Let's get to another name on the list. Here we go. Terrence Gaines Jr. I see what you're doing. I see you out there. Let's see. I found another one. And I'm just selecting random ones. Uh, 2025. What is he? TJ Worthy. Okay. 2025 back. TJ Worthy. Mind you, I have not seen him yet. This is another in-state back uh, out of Gadsden, Alabama. He's at Gadsden City High School. Let's see what he's talking about, chat. Let me see. Let's see what he's talking about. Gonna check him out next. Here we go. Yep, let's check him out. TJ Worthy out of Gadsden City High School, right? See what he's talking about. Catching out the backfield. Oh. Um. I don't know if I want to press play. I don't know if I want to press play anymore, chat. I didn't I didn't sign up to witness this. <laughs> I don't think I want to press. I don't think I want to press play anymore, guys. <laughs> Why he running at him? Look at oh my god. Are we gonna be seeing more of this? I haven't seen this young man's film yet. So he want to run people over. Separate. Separate. Okay. Separate. What's the angle? Oh, not pulling hammies. Not pulling hammies. Let's look at his vision. I'm looking at the old line right now. Look at the execution. Good read. Hit the hole, get upfield. Is he going to pull away? Ooh. Got a little pull away. Hmm. Extension, extension, see it, back cut. Put your foot in the ground. Yo, these guys got some power and explosiveness. These last two films, these last two highlights. And this is all in the state of Alabama, guys. Ooh, look how he set that up. Look at the execution. Is that the left tackle? That's the left guard. Left tackle could have got caught. But the guard, he did his job. Look how he slashes down. Seals that center. Oh, that center climbed. Oh, I like that. I like that. Uh-oh, don't play with him. Don't play with it. Uh. On roster comparison. On roster comparison. I want to see him in the chat. I want to see the on roster comparisons right now. What y'all think? Yeah, what y'all think? That boy put the foot in the ground and got busy. Hey, facts, Antoine. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, just effortlessly too, man. Like, the amount of power that they were able to generate off of a, a lot of these cuts, uh, you, you don't usually see that at the, at the high school level, but you're starting to see it. It's becoming a lot more common with today's athlete. Look, uh, uh, chop, chop. Fluid. Oh, come on. That Oh, he got hurt. Prayers up for the young man. Did y'all see that? See, that's what you don't need, man. Why? Look at him. That's scary. Y'all see that out there? That's scary. Prayers for the young man. Hopefully nothing came with that. Jesus. 
that's what coaches be talking about being smart man there's no need for that he wasn't gonna catch catch your running back yeah you want to show effort see come in there and protect everybody let them know you're there but protect yourself man look at him oh my god that old line hey Hey, he got to give a lot of credit to his old line. This old line is nice. Trent Richardson, Ruben, you hit it right on the head. I said the same thing. Said the same thing. I mean, but them hands right there, them not Trent Richardson. Trent Richardson couldn't catch like that. You know who that looked like just then? Castile. Look at him. You know who else can catch out of the backfield and don't get enough credit for it? Alvin Kamara. How tall is this young man? Let's go back to his profile. 5'10? Shoot. <laughs> Little scat back. He fast enough. I like that. I like that. Let me get back to this page over here. Let's let's do this. Let's go back to Twitter and see who else we can pull up. Y'all make sure y'all showing these boys some love as, as y'all see me go across their name. What's next? Who who else we want to try? Uh, and this is going to be the last one before we get into our last little few minutes. I was trying to stick around and see if we was going to have a crazy announcement, but I'm going to go ahead and prep for one. Let's see. Rayshawn Coleman. Let me let me see. Florala. Y'all know where that's at. On the line. Class of 25. Let me hit him with a follow. Do he got a huddle? Do he got a huddle? Let's see. Rayshawn Coleman. Let's see if Rayshawn Coleman got a huddle. Y'all show Rayshawn Coleman some love right now. Okay, he got a huddle. Oh, and he got, okay. He got a season highlights. Let's do it. Let's do it. DB running back athlete. Let's get into it. Rayshawn Coleman right here, y'all. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Y'all ready? My fault, y'all. I don't know why everybody calling me today um, around this time, but it is what it is. Let's jump into it. Can y'all see him? Make sure I got it up. Running back. Oh. Oh, no. He's at DB. There you go. He on defense right now. So you could tell already coming out of floor alley, this is a guy that's, that's probably not playing against the highest levels of competition. So when you're looking at teams like this, you're just looking at you're looking at playmaking ability, and you're trying to basically see what I'm saying, like plays like that. You're basically trying to size them up to see how it would look against competition. Like right there, not not scared. Clearly knows he's one of the best players on the field. Lining up at quarterback, playing a lot of wildcat. Mm. Long stride. Long stride, natural, natural athlete, right? Natural athlete, good vision. Long stride, like I said, he gets out. That long stride to get you caught up every time. You usually can't get the knees up when you got that long stride. Look at him. See, a playmaker, a playmaker. Lining up at quarterback, defensive end, he's a playmaker. Probably banking on being a running back at the next level, right? I mean, just active, playmaker. I mean, that's all you can say when, you, when you're looking at the film. Get to the ball. No, he didn't scoop and score. No, he didn't scoop and score. That's what I'm saying, playmaker. And, and look, we're not, we're looking at him. We're like, he's supposed to be a running back. But Jalen Bakwe had to do the same thing. He's a playmaker. Look what I'm saying. Unorthodox, he's a playmaker. You can live with that. You see how it's shaping out for Mbakwe? Look at him. Just in the right spot. Scoop. Hey, 
to the house? Is he going to the house? Don't let you better not let that quarterback catch you. You better not. You better not. You better not. I was about to say. I was about to say. You better not. Look at him wearing number nine like Mbakwe too. First down. Put the ball in his hands, let him make plays. Mm. 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 I mean, that's what you do. You just put him, put the ball in his hands, let him make plays. Oh. Y'all, he just ran a defense alignment over. Y'all, I think he just ran through a defense alignment. If I'm not mistaken, am I tripping? Is that it? That's a linebacker? Wait, where did he come from? Let's track this. Let's okay, hold on. Okay, that's a that's a linebacker. Uh. Uh. Mitts for hands. That's what I'm saying, Antoine. Like Emmanuel Henderson. <laughs> like uh like uh, Emmanuel Henderson, right? Antoine, that's that's type of feels, right? Sidestepping that an edge in the middle of <laughs> right. Right, David, that's crazy. But I'm, I'm saying, like, that's why when we evaluate these, I'm realistic. I'm not saying that he can be this elite running back or anything like that. But his playmaking ability, you put him at wide receiver, running back, scat back, situational ball, that's how he creates his career. Tavon Austin type deal, Denard Robinson type deal, where they're specialty players, right? <laughs> facts, Jake. Hey, fact, facts, William. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Antoine straight ball play. That's what I'm saying. You you live with that. You you let you live you <laughs> you live with those situations when you got athletes that you can just you can kind of just feel put them in spots. Cause think about it, you might have a year where you need a, a guy that can can he may not be the best wide receiver, but he can get out there and get open and catch the ball and make plays. Right? You don't you don't have him going out there expecting him to win one-on-ones every time you set him up to win oh my god then he could pass like like uh like like uh what's his name dad what does dad say on uh on uh <laughs> on, on, on friday night lights booby booby miles and he can pass yeah that boy can pass look at man just a playmaker natural ability natural ability yeah man i like it I like it, y'all. So a good, I mean, and that's that's a small portion of what the state of Alabama has to offer when it comes to running back talent. If y'all want to see this, uh, see this this list, right? I'm about to post it live right now. I'm about to reshare it. I'm gonna re reshare it, right? Yeah, so we call them crazy with that. I, I always got to show love when people do their thing. Um, but yeah, appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all for hanging out. How y'all feeling though? What y'all want to talk about to end the show, man? What y'all what we what we getting at today? What we getting at today? What what's what's on that all mind, man? While I take a little this twitch was good. This Gatorade Twitch is pretty good. Shout out to the big 169 in the chat, man. Showing love. Hanging out with your boy today. Shout out to my family for the Kingdom shirts. Check out the apparel. If y'all want to get some of this stuff, man, let me know. Of course, we got the undefeated merch. I might as well be here hopefully tomorrow. Uh, it didn't make it to my folks' house this past weekend. Hope I was hoping to be able to come on yesterday, last night's segment. And... um and talk and uh, do my segment and the undefeated merch but it'll be here soon uh what's the schedule for tonight let me pull it up sis let me pull the schedule up for tonight 
Mm, 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 mm. Today's Tuesday. Oh, wow. Uh, psh, evening crew on live. I don't know who the evening crew is. It kind of got me weird. Like, they got me weird. So, I think the evening crew is Meryl, six. Sean and Jarek at seven. And uh, myself at eight. So, I'm guessing that's what the evening crew is going to be for the rest of the week. So, tonight at six, you got Jake. Uh, you got Jake Merrill. At seven, you got Sean and, and Coach Jay. And then closing out, you got myself. That's what we got. That's what we got. Caleb Cunningham, can we get him? I don't think so. I don't think we can, but um, I think the state of Mississippi means a lot to him. And for a kid like him, I, I, I would want him at Alabama, but I could understand why playing for Mississippi State or Ole Miss would, would mean the world to him. I mean, that's another Ryan Williams situation. I think he's going to have success wherever he goes, man. Uh, but Caleb Cunningham, that's a story that I've been following very closely. And then those Mississippi ties, man, we, yes, we can pull it. But in those situations, man, it's so, it, you'll have kind of like a Caden Proctor type thing. Caden Proctor was the the pride of, of old Iowa, you know. And uh, you saw what happened with him, you know, with tampering not being a real thing, you know, with it being legal, you know. Uh, you saw how that affected his play, I believe. As a coach, I've seen it happen. Outside distractions definitely can affect your on-field play. So, order was canceled. Your undefeated merch order was canceled. You might need to check on that. Hey, Smook, do we get Duke on Wednesday? Smook is crystal balling Duke Johnson, Daryl Duke Johnson to Alabama on Wednesday. Yes. Smook is, uh, the Smook scoop is saying Daryl Johnson to Alabama on Wednesday. The smooth scoop is also saying um, we'll get a commitment Sunday, right? We'll get a commitment, another Alabama commitment on Sunday, um, linebacker commitment. Uh, who else is this week? We might get a third commitment before. We might get a second commitment before the week is out. Uh, not sure with this running back recruit, but uh, I think we're getting in that one too. Uh yeah yeah i like that yeah I, I really do i really do i like that I, I like our chances with duke um and the class is shaping up that that recruiting class is shaped a 25 class is getting ridiculously like as far as targets it's getting ridiculous man it's getting ridiculous and, and guys that are actually interested it's, it's becoming more realistic you're seeing a lot of guys crystal ball some names to us right um after their visits and it's becoming like a trend and a lot of these recruits that was on our on our radar early that have been taking their time they're starting to see the importance of trying to get on board um let's look at the commits real quick currently for alabama let me see which is the five right here. Got these, these current, these six, five, I'm sorry. Five commits right now. Screenshot alert. We got these five commits right now. You got uh, Derek Smith, who committed on the 11th. Um, Anthony Rogers, he's been committed since committing, right? Back, back last year in June, been a steady, uh, force as far as keeping our class, you know, intact. Um, you got Antonio Coleman. He uh, we flipped him from Auburn. This young man, that's a big soap, big bar of soap, right? Hard to stop at the D line. Miles Johnson, another guy. I'm, I think we're looking at him for a linebacker. Don't know if he's going to play on the edge or an inside linebacker. I like him at inside with to, to you know be in rotation with guys like QB Reese and Sterling Dixon. You know, that's another guy. Um, and then Zamir Smith made his announcement last week. Y'all yeah, remember how excited we were to have him. I definitely think he's coming to play uh to to play wide receiver. Well, I'm not sure with Zamir. I, I would like him at, at safety, rover, um, corner, you know, anywhere in the second there, but you look at his speed, that guy has water like ability, you know, 
not necessarily the twitch waddle hat but that that stretch speed it's 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 different so i i look at that young man and i'm like okay we're, we're really doing some things with this class um as far as guys that we have commits committed already um let's look at this offer list let me make a screenshot here um As a matter of fact, we can share this tab. So let's look at the guys that we've offered. Uh, you see, we've offered Bryce Underwood. You know, that, that guy, I think he's going to be a LSU lock. Julian Lewis. This is the one that everybody's asking about. Let me see if they've updated it yet. I don't think they've updated the crystal ball. But I honestly believe Juju is Bama. He'll be the first five star of the class, if I'm not mistaken. Right? He'll be the first one of the class to commit. Um, and that flip would definitely like swing the momentum of what we got coming to Alabama. A lot of people been talking about Deuce Knight. I don't think he's a fit. Great quarterback. I just don't think he's a fit for this scheme. Well, you get Juju, you kind of, you kind of just you don't worry about securing another quarterback in this class. Um, I'm looking at uh uh, Kylan Deer. Can't wait to hear that announcement. We already got Turbo. That's two backs in this class. Um, I'm hearing that we're making a push for maybe one more. And um, it's an in-state guy. Uh, not even sure if he's on this list here. It's not, And it's not Alvin. I think we're kind of, you know, coming to grips that that's an Auburn. That's an Auburn guy. Um, I gotta go double check on that running back. Wide receivers. I mean, you see Jamie French on the list. I'm not too too big on French myself. Caleb Cunningham would love to have him, but I'm telling you, that old miss and uh that those state of Mississippi ties are so deep. And Kaylin, not Kaylin DeBoer, uh Lane Kiffin is capitalizing on on those connections. We got Derek Smith, um, Travis Smith Jr. I think we really have a good chance. It's between us and Georgia with Travis. And he set his commitment date, I think, for June 20th, I believe. I'll double check on that. Uh, Marcus Harris is another name that I've been hearing conversations about where, you know, he's ready to get back on campus, right? Um, My my cousin, Tanuk, that's not, I don't know if he's really my uh, my cousin, but uh, that would be a good steal if we could get him, get his gain his interest, another rangy athlete but Quanell faircon um this says six foot he looks more six two honestly uh i i i i, I think Quanell is like maybe six one six two he has long arms but he's fast his stride is is a is a fast like twitch but he's long with his stride so i i can't wait to see what type of season he uh and you know turns out this this senior year uh nation montgomery uh, whoever was in here talking about Florida athletes earlier, this is a guy out of Florida. I'm, I, I, we talked about it when we looked at his film the other day, um, last week. And, and dude is a is a flyer. You, that's what you usually get out of Florida, guys that can really stretch the field. Um, and CJ Wiley, that's a guy that that I think we're heating up on. Not sure where he fits into this grand scheme. Looking at the the guys in his class that are kind of ahead of him on the priority board. But if he decides to commit to Bama, we might, we might, you might see a few other wide receivers that kind of back off because Wiley is one of those guys, his upside is way out there. Like you don't, you, you don't measure it on a small scale. So um, offensive tackles, another position I'm excited about for this 25 class. This young man, David Sanders here, I'm telling you all realistic, realistic commitment coming from that young man. I feel like, Right now, I'm about 85, 90% with, with Sanders committing to Bama. Small conversations, little short conversations I've been able to have and interact with the young man. I I mean, he likes the energy at Bama. I think the conversation with Coach Cap is, is going to be a huge thing once he's able to talk to him face to face. Same thing with Ty Haywood. You know, uh, Ty Hayes has connections. He's in Denton, Texas. And um, last we talked, the, the, it was realistic. Alabama is definitely making a push. Um, and, and I mean, Alabama is making a push for a lot of the top end guys. You don't see them just kind of settling. You see them going after the guys. 
Uh, Mason Short, you know, he's a Georgia lean. Uh, hearing that he's giving some interest. Uh, Mal Walter, you know, Auburn's after him heavy out of Central Phoenix City. This young man's a three-star, but he's definitely not a three-star talent. He's he's more of a four-star. Not going to get to a lot of camps. Doesn't need to, you know, turn the film on if you want to see what I'm about. You know, I like guys that bank on that. Look what I can do at, at, at the highest level of high school football in the state of Alabama. You know, a lot of guys that play at the 1A and 2A level, you know, across the across the nation, they're the ones that, that really should should look into camps and getting into all that extra exposure because the level of talent is different. And you see the, the integration. Like, you see guys come from schools like Duncanville, like Kendrick Blackshear that struggle with integrating into the college game. So, you know, it's good to get to these camps and camp and start getting familiar with how coaches at that level want to coach you, what they're looking for as far as your skill development, um, technique, all of that stuff. Some more offensive linemen that I'm excited about. It's Jacoby Ward. Where is he? There you go. Jacoby Ward. Ward. Now, look, you look at this guy, you say 6'4", 335. Um, Rock Montgomery-like energy on that in the trenches. Rock Montgomery-like energy in the trenches. Excited to see him. Hopefully he can pick up a, a strong Alabama look, right? I hate that we can't get over on this, this screen. Who else, man? And I'm just giving y'all names to think about. Uh, oh, this is where Alabama, and I'm going to share this part. I'm going to share this part. Let's do this. This is where Alabama, to me, is really making a, a different type of push um, with the athletes. Athletes available in this class. Uh, look at the names. Daryl Johnson, Keoti Armstrong. We, we've we been excited about him. This is a guy we believe is probably going to play defensive end or can play tight end for us, right? Um, Nick Townsend, another kid that I'm excited about. You look at Nick Townsend, where do you place him? Linebacker, do you place him at tight end? Do you let him be a big wide receiver out of Houston? You get what I'm saying? Um, who else? We got Zymer. Henry Dalton, this guy out of Virginia, I got, I gotta, got to see him. I just, I just want this kid to just continue to develop. You, you put him at safety. I mean, just look at the the style of athlete. Look at the the mold and makeup. All of these guys are rangy in their build, right? And these are these are deliberate targets. They're they're rangy in their size. Like you could put them in different spots. You give them a year to kind of figure out where they're going to be the most effective at, right? Grayson Littleton, he's a good DB. I think Grayson Littleton going to be uh, uh, one of those guys. Um, he's going to surprise people with who he uh, commits to. I don't think he's coming to Bama. I, that's just my personal take. And 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 also, I think Littleton is. Uh, I think he's more of a, 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 a. I think FSU might have a more of a lead on him. I think Littleton might. We might see more of a lead with uh, FSU. Because FSU is doing some solid recruiting with these recruits, um, with their class, this 25 class. They got a solid base of guys that they're bringing in with this 25 class. Um, but Littleton, Florida guy, wouldn't be surprised if 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 LSU, I mean, FSU can get the early lane. Um, Florida still is going to compete. You know, they're still a brand. And um, But if anybody has a chance to flip right now, it's this Alabama staff. That's my little take on it, Jay. Uh, Dane Drake's tomorrow. Laughing, like, Kayla. I'm starting to plan my off day for something strange. Oh Lord, oh Lord, let's not let's not do that. Let's not do strange stuff. Okay, guys, everybody stay calm. <laughs> but no, nah, that's just a few recruits that I'm looking at, y'all guys. I'm keeping my eye on. I think uh, we got a good opportunity to get some get some big names on here tonight. The lineup for tonight is going to be lit. Uh, uh, let me see. I got. And I'm gonna check my text messages. We got uh <clears throat> Luke Metz at 8:15, right? And then we got our uh, we got a, a Kylan Deer attentively, because right now he's uh organizing trying to get to Bama, trying to get on campus here tomorrow. And uh, he'll be leaving out Thursday. Um, but dear, 
getting him on tonight attentively 805 to 815 plan to do just some reaction uh either at 805 to 815 or 830 to 845 we'll have uh ad on um, Luke Metz already confirmed 815. So be on. Make sure y'all sharing the live, right? Make sure that we're we're sharing the tweets that's going to be coming out. Um yeah. A should probably meet up in the area near Westgate Condos. Man, it's gonna be so packed out there. A we don't we don't know what I, I, and you know what? I'm gonna put the pressure on Kyle to, to give us some insight on what's gonna happen with A Day. Cause it's coming. Like we we less than a month away now. We less than a month away, and um, I know y'all gonna be turned. I know the energy gonna be high. It's gonna be a good day. I think we're gonna have a, a a great time out there getting to meet everybody finally. Right? It's gonna be a good vibe. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I do consume alcohol before 8 p.m. very often. Tomorrow will, will be different. <laughs> will or will not be different. yeah because you know what it's going to be other uh, shows out there you know trying to trying to capture the thunder but you can't caption then you can't caption no thunder like we got exactly caitlin as coach d said during the initial press conference we're going to win with class integrity and academic excellence yep 100 percent. like that big area a little off from the statues toward westgate you got to understand, man, it's going to be over 100,000 people at 8 a So, yeah, the, the sooner we know where we're going to set up at, and it's going to be a long day for us, the staff. We don't even know how we're going to, like, are we going to just do a walking type thing, a walking podcast where we have different cameras ready to, to film all day? Are we going to be stationary? Um, we don't know, man. So many opportunities, so many options to take advantage of. And uh, we we could we could spread out. Hey, they gonna have a game day film. <laughs> I feel that man. Be rough for y'all. I'll be glad to help. And look, and you all know we 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 believe in keeping it simple, stupid. We believe in kids. Keep it simple. That's the most effective way, and uh, to to get quality content out. So we'll see. We'll see. But with that being said, y'all. Unless y'all got something for me. As a matter of fact, I do got something for y'all. We've been talking about recruiting my whole segment. Let's let's let me give y'all a poll. It wouldn't be right to leave without a poll, right? Here you go. Here you go, chat. Here go a poll for y'all in the chat. Chat is in the uh uh poll is in the chat. Put you and Kyle on the table and someone in the stadium. <laughs> Smoking with Clemson filing a lawsuit like FSU with the ACC collapse after this season. You know what, Jor? I'm going to tell you like this, and this is what we were talking about earlier um, towards the end of the season with the playoff selection when everybody was tripping. We told you all that FSU ran from joining the SEC back in 19, or was it 2002? I think the first time, the first attempt was 98 or might have been 2002, but they ran away from it, right? With the recent alignment that happened six years ago, they had an opportunity then to get a buyout and come and join a more uh a more competitive conference so that they can get the respect right but they were so bent on keeping that miami fsu rivalry there uh and miami miami was kind of like the little brother miami never won that conference you know during this whole time of its existence miami has yet to win it so you look at it and you factor everything in you saw it coming you saw it coming so yeah I like 
And me and Coach Sean was talking about it last week, y'all. I'm sorry, I had to. My lips was feeling dry. But me and Coach Sean was talking about it last week about how, um, you know, the 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 two super conferences could work, but let's 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 divisionalize them. Let's put them in divisions that make sense. So have a a, a if if because believe it or not, y'all, we're going to junior pro football. That's all college football is going to turn into junior pro football. So you got your two divisions, right? And you have regions, you know, like the NFL. And you schedule it. 16 games, if that's what we're going to have, 16 games, go ahead and set it up. Let bowl games come around at the end of the season. Let conference games, let 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 uh, those companies sponsor conference games and let those be bowl games, right? Conference championship games, right? And then you go into the playoffs and let the playoffs be the playoffs. Whether it's 12 team, 10 team, whatever, 14, whatever. You can work just got to make it make sense there's no reason usc oregon and all these other pac 12 teams that's realigning joining these conferences should have to travel the way they do yes it's going to create opportunities for money but what's the quality of football what's what's going to happen with the quality of football the product on the field right so yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got 32 votes in. Come on, y'all run them votes up. We got 165 watching. Run them votes up. Let's get 50 votes in before we close the poll, y'all. Alabama's 25 class will be top three. We got 82% saying yes, it's a reality. 18% saying it's a reach. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Mario. Josh Pay makes a lot of sense. I said this the other day, though, like uh, before even my like, it just made sense. I've always thought college football should have been moved to that format, anyways. Though, when you had like undefeated teams having to share national championships, like why there was why wasn't there a system in place then? You know why we why we haven't advanced to that already? BCS, you know. But yeah, so with that being said, y'all, thank y'all for hanging out with your boy. It's been fun. As always, don't forget tonight we're kicking off with Jake Merrill. He'll be popping off with the uh the night segment with the, the night crew will be kicking off. And then you'll have uh Coach Sean and Coach Jay coming on together doing a dual segment. Uh not sure what they topics are gonna be, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good as always. And then I'll be closing the night out. We'll have some special guests some top recruits that some targets that Alabama's is targeting. Luke Metz has confirmed he'll be here 815-ish. And we'll have uh, a Kylan Deer, running back, number one running back in the state of Alabama. Uh, we should have him on tonight, 830-ish, if not in. And we're gonna have a good show tonight. So hopefully you all are stick around. If you got any recruits you want me to check out, right? Tonight after we do our, our special guest, we'll look at some more film, look at some recruits, send them to me. CoachSmook at gmail.com, under the radar, or, uh, you know, on the radar, hidden gems, all of that stuff. We're, gonna, we're looking at them. Coach Smook studs, we're going to be start uh, populating that more often. So, yeah, let's enjoy it, y'all. Let's enjoy this process. Let's enjoy being at the top of college football because it, it's not changing anytime soon. So, y'all take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your day until we see each other again. It's been fun. Appreciate everybody that super chatted, every new member, right? Bama fan, what's good, man? What's good, man? Welcome in. You, you showed up late. It's all good. Look, you'll get to see it all tonight. 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. We're dropping this thing. We're, we're kicking it off tonight. And, uh, yeah, play me hey, play me my theme music. <laughs> y'all funny, man. Hey, much love, y'all. Roll Tide, and I'm out, man.